Hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of the High Roller Super Millions as it's not the usual 10k, this time it's part of the WSOP online which means there is a bracelet on the line. I am of course Kevin DeCoy, also known as Rotterdam and I am joined by the one and only Spiky Hair today, Nana Noko. What's up Nana? What's up man? Yeah, it's a, it's a 10k special one but not only is a WSOP event, that, well, that means a bracelet will be awarded tonight and we got a special commentator is that right roddy that is right i already said there's a bracelet on the line nano but yes we oh, will okay. be joined by danny on the ground today which is going to be awesome he will not be here from the very get-go because we have to do our pre pre show and then our little pre show where we take a look at the guys that made it to the final table take a look at their profiles go over the hand histories but in 10 minutes before the final table actually starts which is in roughly 30 minutes from now Daniel will be joining us and he will be hanging out for quite some time talking about some of these plays, which means that we have to be on our best behavior in Nenonoko. No ruddy birthday today, <laughs> no pocket fours always make us sad. We gotta behave a little bit. Yeah, we, but you know, after he leaves, we're all in on that. Like, we're gonna do it three <laughs> times, four X way, way more often. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, we're good to go. We gotta speed things up a little bit today, right? So um, we should get our pick in. Maybe before Daniel comes on, I'll let you know that for yes. our little yeah, side yeah, we bet. We can do it. We, you know what? Let's just do that right after the final table betting segment. So production, let's go Perfect. ahead and bring up the beautiful graphic of the nine players that have made it to this final table. I think it's safe to say, Nano, we've got a really good lineup. I know that that's what we're supposed to say, but I really like the guys that we have. It's a nice mix of previous champs, big names, a super old school player, and a chip leader who's in for nine bullets, but he has already turned a profit, so that was a pretty good decision. I picked Thomas Mulocker, you picked Isaac Baron, which is really funny, because that would have been my other pick, and I did put some money on him in the final table betting. But why Isaac Baron, Nano? Well, Isaac Baron, he actually won uh, two editions of, uh, in season one, uh, and it might have been his only two final tables, too. Uh, if I recall correctly, mm -hmm. but maybe I'm wrong, but he's just got, he's super solid. He kind of reminds me of Lena 900, um, where he just plays really solid, just gets it done. But he didn't get all those second places like him, but he doesn't play as often as Lena 900. Um, very impressive, very solid player, and he's very old school. He's been around for a very long time playing online poker. Um, just one of my favorite players to watch. I remember the first time he won, and I think he went heads up against somebody else that I picked. So I was like low key rooting for the other guy, but I was like, all right, Isaac Baron, you did well. But then I remember the second time he won, he was rock solid. I remember both of us just being at the end, we like, he played incredibly well. Like, there was just no analysis, nothing else to add. He played a, as close to a perfect table as one man could play. I thought it was a very memorable performance, and that's why I definitely put some dollars on him as well. Today, the final table betting is wild, man. If you look at the odds, it's actually pretty damn close across the board, right? The only one that's somewhat short is Rune F. Of course, you're getting 19 to 1 for him. So I had to throw a couple of dollars at our good old Brazilian who likes to blow up every now and then. But uh, it's actually kind of insane to see that the chip leader and Eric Seidel, that's basically 1 to 7 here. The odds are pretty damn close to each other. How wild is that? Yeah, it's very close. And the, um, the yeah, because the chip stacks are also very close. There's no clear chip leader. Everyone's got a lot of chips. It really is anyone's game. This isn't one of those chip leader 2x the stack of the second place guy. He's going to run it over. Um, we're also playing for a lot of money on top. So I think everyone's got to be careful, even the chip leader. Um, you know, he's in for nine bullets, but now he's in the money, so he doesn't need to do any more makeup, right? Uh, it's really going to be a tough one to pick. Um, we've got some heavy hitters out here, like Thomas Mulocker. I, I think he's... I, I even told you, well, there's like 50 people. If I said, I think we're getting another final table of Thomas Mulocker, and here he is, sitting in second place, mm -hmm. right? Um, but Francisco, he's a very strong player. It's his second final table, if I recall correctly. Because he was in the one where Michael Adamo won again just recently. And he was the guy who snap called down Adamo three streets of just ace X rag, right? Like, you know, he was good. And that's all I remember of him. But I know he's a very good player. He's a, I think he's known as Tamati or something. And, um, yeah, he, he's tough. But uh, look at the other guys out there. Klaus, you remember Klaus, right? 
Yeah, well, yes, Nana, no, because no, that was like two or three weeks ago. Of course, I remember Klaus. Uh, he did have a little bit of a roller coaster because it wasn't smooth sailing from the beginning to the end. There was this one crucial hand where I think he got it in slightly worse than his opponent, but he got there on the turn or the river, and after that, he was still able to close it out after he came in as a chip leader. Uh, talk to me about Eric Seidel. That is kind of like, you yeah. know, when you talk about like Roddy, what is your history in poker? I used to watch all of you guys, and then I've obviously been a bit away, so I wasn't that familiar at first with the Ben CBs, the Europeans, the Lina 900s. But Eric Seidel, I've obviously seen him too. But talk to me, how happy are you that Eric Seidel is here? It's really cool because we. It's good to see that um, this is this will be his ninth bracelet if he can take it down. I believe nine is the right number. He's currently has eight. Uh, Eric Seidel is one of the very old school players. This guy is the guy who lost to Johnny Chan. The World Series of Poker main event in rounders. That clip that they played over and over again. And that was Eric Seidel, who made the bluff and got called, snap called, and got trapped. Uh, but he's been around for a long time. And he's, the, I would say, the first old school guy who, well, I'm going to say the first, but one of them who, hang, who, hood, who could stay and hang with the pros. Um, there's the young pros out there, and he just kept final tabling these 100Ks and 25Ks and 50Ks very regularly. He was making lots of money still. And here he is. He's gonna do it again. Um, he's he's really just a really solid player. Uh, he won't let you get away with anything, and he really does have a shot to take this down tonight. All right, the people at home still have three minutes to place a bet if they want to place a bet. We are basically just giving a lot of compliments and praise to all these guys. Nana Noko, I give you a hundred bucks right now. What do you do with your hundred dollars? I probably would split it evenly amongst your pick, Thomas Mulocker, my pick, Isaac Barron. And you know what? You got to put some money on the GOAT, Eric Seidel, right? Like, because he's the only one here who can win another bracelet, if, if I, I think so. And, you know, it's just something special here. And we got Daniel coming in. He's going to give this guy some praise. I feel like you got to split it amongst those three guys today. I think a lot of people will agree with you. We can see quite some money has already gone down, especially on Thomas Mulocker, people believe. Keeps on making final tables. Hasn't won it yet. But I think we all know that Thomas plays for the win. And we know what he's capable of. What can you tell me about Joachim Haraldstad? Which is a beautiful Scandinavian name, by the way. Yeah, I honestly don't know anything about him. Um, I did rail a pretty good amount of that um, up to the final table. And um, I, just, I didn't know him then. But he was a pretty solid guy. He was battling a bit. Um, but other than that... I can't really tell you too much about him. I can't tell you too much about Shingis, Satu Bayev either, and Chin Wei Chien. I also don't know too much about. So we do got three new faces. Uh, was that three? Three new faces. Well, Eric Seidel, if you mm -hmm. want to count him too. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what to. But everyone here, definitely a professional poker player. We don't got no random guy just limp jamming, going nuts. Uh, it was seriously just the craziest final table. Just a lot to talk about. We'll talk about it throughout the whole. Um, day today, but I need to know your bet today. Who did you? Put yeah, money on? I, I, I split it a little bit. A couple days ago, uh, as soon as final table bet was up, when I say a couple days ago, I guess I mean like yesterday when I rolled out a bet. But yesterday I had a super long day, so that feels like a week ago. I immediately put some money on two guys. I was like, all right, uh, I got my rake back, you know, on Sunday night. I was like, all right, what are we gonna do with the rake back? Put some money down on Thomas Mulocker, I think a little over $100. And then I think at first I put 50 bucks down on Isaac Barron. And then right before we went live here, I don't have exact numbers. I was like, okay, we got to put some money on Eric Seidel because I know that Daniel will obviously be rooting for him. You will be rooting for him. And I think it's awesome to have such an old school player make it to our final table. And I think I put some extra money on Isaac Barron too. So it's mostly Thomas Mulocker, Isaac Barron, Eric Seidel for me. And I think a little fun bet on Rune F because... There were some moments where he should have won it. He never won it. Now he comes in as the heavy underdog. You can say what you want about Runev, but he's not playing to get 8th place. Like, he's still going to try to spin it up. And I don't think it's a bad bet. I don't think it's a bad bet because I believe 2.6 million chips is still a good amount of chips. Like, the other week we saw the guy, uh, you know, come in in 8th place and ship it. So, you know, 19-1, to 1, like, that's, that's always good value. Um, yeah, no. But I guess... We're going to get into the hands soon, but can we do our pick for our little side bet before Daniel comes on? And you get of first course. pick, Go actually, right? I well, get first pick. Well, then I'm obviously going for... 
Yeah, it's even number. Uh, obviously, I'm going for my pick of the week. Anything else wouldn't make any sense, right? I'm fully sending it on Thomas Mulocker. I feel like he got a couple, pretty unlucky a couple of times. He's made it to the final table, short stack, medium stack, whatever. This is the first time he actually comes in second. Plenty to play with, so many big blinds. I think it's over 50. I think Thomas Mulocker is going to win his bracelet today. Just saying, Thomas Mulocker hasn't got a top three on a Super Millions yet, but. Isaac Barron has got two first places, so that's going to be my lock-in for our little side bet today. Isaac Barron will get it done, or it'll be Eric Seidel. That's my prediction. I love how we hype this up, and then in the end, we just pick what's literally under our webcams. Like, <laughs> All right, Dananoko, I'm glad that we got that official on the record. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off with our official pre-show. We'll have plenty of time later on after Daniel leaves to talk about some other stuff then we can uh, be our regular Mimi self but for now let's just go ahead and take a look at the beautiful profile of our chip leader the way we're going to do it today because we have to get through all nine profiles and hand histories in 20 minutes is that i'll mostly talk about the profile and then onoka will be taking care of the hand history so here we have Francis francisco benitez he's in for nine bullets guys but the min cash tonight for the final table is 120 something thousand so that was still a great idea. And on top of that, he comes in as the chip leader. As you guys can see, he did make it to our final table not too long ago. Uh, August 1st, took fifth place back then. Actually had some cool plays. He was not afraid to fight back against Michael Adamo. I think it was a lot of fun to uh, watch Francisco that night. We couldn't see all that much of him. It's his fifth appearance in season two. He is the favorite when it comes to the bets, but that's of course because he's got the most amount of chips. Let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the hands of the many bullets Francisco Benitez had on the Sunday night. And I'll let you take it from here and then another. I think it's safe to say that this bullet was one of the rebuy bullets because he was down to <laughs> 11,000 chips in this one. Um, it's such a wild hand too because he opens two people calling this guy, Min Fish. Just open jams 120,000, gets called, called, and he thinks the jack to knock out pretty much two players here. Uh, such a sick hand, but Francisco, he's got the ninth bullet, and this is not the ninth bullet. No, got it in good, got unlucky. It happens, but hey, that's why you take full uh, advantage of that long registration period. Eventually, Francisco was able to run it up. I don't think we've ever had anyone make it to our final table on nine bullets it's honestly quite insane we had over 624 entries for this one it was a five million guaranteed but this obviously makes the price pool over six million so that's really cool to see let's go ahead and take a look at my pick of the week the man that's chasing him thomas mulocker i wasn't that familiar with thomas not too long ago i'll be totally honest about that but nananoko got me on board told me some cool stories and i was like all right Let's see how Thomas plays. And Thomas plays for the win. There is no other way to put it. This guy is not gonna sit around and wait for a pay jump. He's not gonna sit around and wait for a short day to bust. Obviously, if it's absolutely the right thing to do, he will do it. But I really have been a big fan of everything that Thomas Mulocker has shown us. And the sad thing is, he's just been really unlucky so far. He often got it in good or just did what he was supposed to do and ran into a little setup. But I believe today everything will be different for the man who is second on the Austrian all-time money list. And as you guys can see, back-to-back -back final tables. And I honestly feel that we're talking about five final tables in like the last 12 times we have been live or something. Thomas is here almost every week at this point. And I love that he has a subscription to visiting Nano and myself at the Tuesday evening. Let's go ahead and take a, one, take a look at one of the many hands that he had on the Sunday night. That helped him get a monster stack to this final table. But it's a pretty fun one, isn't it, yeah? No, no. Yeah, it's pretty deep in the tournament too. It's a limp pot. Um, he limps nine seven off suit against Klaus. And you know, he flops the straight, bets it, turns to ten, and he bets pretty big again too, because he knows the jack won't fold, he knows the ten won't fold, and once he sees the call on the on the turn and the ace comes in, he goes for a near pot size bet. He kinda thinks that Jack wouldn't call when the ace rolls off now so he's better off sizing really big to try to get the maximum from a 10 and also some maybe some random ace that that got there but you know what i noticed um during the little profile was that he has five final tables but that's in season two alone that's eight episodes yeah. five final tables and season one he had three final tables but that was near the end of the 
of the season, right? So this dude's got so many final tables of sick. He just needs one of those top three scores. But today, there is so much money up top and the bracelet up, up top. It'll, it'll just wash everything away. And don't forget that we also had one off uh, Tuesday where it was the final table of a massive 1K because we were postponing for the anniversary edition and he was at that final table too. So Thomas Mulocker mm -hmm. is just here almost each and every single week. He's been doing really well. The only thing that's missing is that one epic run or potentially the crown, but hey, maybe he saved up all his run good for tonight. I sure as hell hope so. I think it would be awesome. Best of luck to Thomas tonight. Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile of the man that I'm not familiar with. And apparently you can't tell me that much about him either. Joachim Haraldstad. Love the name. A PLO specialist. That does make my heart beat a little bit faster. And he apparently satellited his way into this event. He played a 1K. And well, it's to say that he's done absolutely amazing. A couple of big scores though at GG so far. We can see that in the Spring Series Festival. He did well in the main event. Did well in one of the PLO side events. The other one was in PLO actually too. Uh, but yeah, not a regular for our tournament series. As you guys can see, did not really play in the High Roller Super Million Season 1. Never made it to a final table before. So we can't tell you that much. Other than the fact that the man might be bored tonight because he only gets two cards. But hey, we can just stay, stay calm, get a couple pay jumps. Should be all good. Let's go ahead and see if the hand history of Mr. Harold Stutt can tell us a little more about how he likes to play. Yeah, so in this hand he was against Michael Adamo. This was maybe final 15 players or less. Um, he defends the Queen-10, check calls a flop uh, with the middle pair, check check on a turn and you know, he he knew Michael Adamo was a little sticky, he's gonna make some calls, So, but he didn't want to bet too big where he's gonna get like these ace high type hands or bottom pairs of fold. so he bets just two big blinds, gets the value from Michael Adamo, and this was just a continual fall from Michael Adamo, who was a chip leader, eventually out of the tournament. So nice job for Howard Stott getting some value there of second pair. Yeah, I was actually kind of hopeful that Michael Adamo was going to make it to our final table because he was doing quite well for quite some time. He was in the, the top 20 when I took a look at the lobby a few times on the Sunday night. I was like, come on, mate, get it together. Be super fun. Wasn't meant to be for Michael Adamo, but it was meant to be for our satellite winner. Good luck tonight to Mr. Harold Stott. I'm going to try to work on that Norwegian accent tonight. <laughs> Let's take a look at the man who has already won it once in Season 2, just a couple of weeks ago. Hailing from Austria, Klaus Zegebrecht. At least that's how I think we pronounce his uh, last name, but we've mostly gone with Klaus. Klaus had a very, very good showing on July 25th. As you guys can see in the bottom right side, that's when he won it. Uh, there was maybe one moment where things weren't going that well, but then he won a monster pot and just kind of took control of the table again and never let go. It's obviously quite sick for Klaus that he won it, well, what is that, less than a month ago? And now he's back here again, and this is not just another final table. This is obviously a monstrous edition. A WSOP bracelet on the line. I am looking forward to watching a little more Klaus tonight. Don't know if he can go back to back. But we're about to find out. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands Klaus had on his journey to this final table. Yeah, so in this hand, he's got the Ace King. Um, I'm not sure how many bullets he's in for, but man, he lost a lot of chips there. He, he calls the three bet of Ace King because it's like level one of the tournament. Check calls a flop, turns the nut flush draw, check calls again, river jams. You know, it's like a, the best card to hit with Ace King on the river. He calls all in and sees the bad news against the pocket aces. Um, I guess we're just showing you guys how all these guys have rebought into the tournament. But uh, Klaus is uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's an excellent player. He's actually only in for two bullets. So there is a chance that this was okay. his first one. And that he then indeed uh, rebuy. Or did he bought his way in a little bit later. But even after this hand, he still has 23 big blinds. You're not going to wave the towel with 23 bigs. No, no, one double and we're completely I'm out. back in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might be. Especially early on if you know you've got a couple hours to rebuy. But only two bullets for class. Really impressive stuff from him so far in Season 2 of the Hyrule Super Millions. Wish him all the best. Next up, we're going to take a look at the profile of a man who has a very complicated name. And I'm going to try to go with Shinjis Satubayev. I think we're somewhat close. Apparently hailing from Montenegro. Uh, I believe that he satellited his way into this one as well. Yes, indeed. Won a 1K satellite. Did play the High Roller Super Millions a long time ago. 
Um, a top 57, walked away with $42,000, but it's safe to say that he's not quite a regular to our weekly 10k. Mostly he seems to be playing tournaments in the 1k, 2k, 3k region. Couple good scores, but this could very well be one of the absolute biggest spots he's ever had over at GG Poker. So, looking forward to seeing how he's gonna do tonight. I think he's already very happy with the thousand dollars that he invested. Uh, let's see where the ship will go for him. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had and see if we can learn a little more about the way that this man likes to play poker. Well, I mean, uh, this is really deep in the tournament. He gets jammed all in, small line versus big line, calls off king, queen, hits the perfect flop in turn. Um, yeah, I remember like when I was railing this uh, final like 12 people, it was basically they all took turns jamming the small blind and the big blind just kept calling all in and kept doubling up. So it was like, well, good thing we have a 40 big blind rollback because it's going to give us a lot more play today. Otherwise, like it could, you know, like just be a shove fest. So I, I do like that we've got that adjustment here on GG Poker. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Don't hate the call though with King Queen, right? Especially if they are jamming a lot and you know that you know, they might jam King-8, King-9 suited and that all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff as well. So, I think it's a perfectly fine call. Even though he needed a bit of help, he got there. And that means that his fairy tale will go on for now. Not a bad uh, spin-up so far from his initial $1,000 investment. We've got a few more profiles to cover before Daniel is joining us. So, let's get through it. And next up, I believe we will be talking about the man... That is Nanonoko's pick of the week. He's won the High Roller Super Millions twice, as you guys can see in the bottom right side, September 13th and March the 14th earlier this year. Especially the second one. I really thought that Isaac Baron was incredibly impressive. He is about as old school as they get. Well, maybe not Eric Seidel old school, but he's pretty old school. And it's really cool to see him still hanging in there and duking it out with the youngsters. He's as old school as it gets for an internet player, all right? But hey, look, I didn't know he... I forgot he had a World Series of Poker bracelet, too. So apparently him and Eric Seidel can maybe win a second one. I think Win Chai has a WSOP bracelet as well, Nanonoko. So maybe you need to we'll find <laughs> do the homework a little bit more. <laughs> a couple of them have bracelets, but Eric Seidel probably has the most. Let's just go with that. Let's go ahead and take a look then at one of the hands that Mr. Baron had on his journey to another final table. Uh, I don't know if you can really do a whole lot of analyzing on this hand, Nano, but it is still a pretty ballsy nope. bet on the turn, so go ahead and take it away. Pretty much it's a delayed continuation bet here. Um, just check the flop, and uh, on the turn he decided to go for a stab. Maybe he had the best hand, maybe he didn't. Uh, but this is also very deep in the tournament, and uh, you know Isaac Barron at one point in the final like 15 people was a chip leader. Um, you know, he was sharing the spot with Adama, but one of them fell, and Isaac Barron is still hanging in there. A two-time champ trying to become a three-time champ, and trying to do the same thing as Michael Adama did, win it in Season 1 and Season 2. I don't even know how many weeks we are in exactly in Season 2 right now, I guess like 8, and week number 8. Yeah, eight. But obviously this one just feels special, it feels different, it feels bigger, because there's a bracelet on the line as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile of... The man that is old school and not just when it comes to internet players. As I believe it's time for us to talk about Eric Seidel, a poker legend, 38 million in live caches. Does not play the high roller super mirrors a whole lot, or well, almost ever really. Apparently, uh, this is the first time in season two, and I don't know if he ever tried it in season one. But yeah, we are super happy to have Eric Seidel at our final table. As you guys can see, when it comes to live events, top right side. Some beautiful scores. Can't wait. It's going to be really awesome. This is the first time ever that I get to talk about Eric Sedell playing poker. So I'm very excited for it. Let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that this poker legend had on the Sunday night that helped him make it to this final table. Yeah, you can see in the spot he limps the ace jack against Isaac Barron. He probably would have limp jammed his hand trying to trap his aggressive opponents. Flop's really good on the flop. Just check. Still trying to bait the trap. Turns a king, he checks again. River, it's a six, he still checks. He checks all three streets, trying to trap his opponent. Eventually gets his opponent to throw a bet out there with the pair of nines and uh, made the quick call there and sitting on 20 big ones at the time of this hand ending. I honestly feel that this hand played out very different than we see it most of the time this deep into the tournament. Would you agree with that? 
Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Um, you know, Eric's like for a lot of times the big blind just raising this nine five offsuit after limping getting jammed on. If not, usually you would see someone just firing out some bets right away. But Eric Seidel, I think he knows all these internet kids are very aggressive, so he just keeps trying to trap them. You know, just to wait, just like how Johnny Ch Chan trapped him. Right? It's been so many years. He's, he's <laughs> ready to lay traps on other people. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's going to be awesome to watch Eric Sedel play some poker tonight, and hopefully, he's got a great run. I know that a lot of people will be rooting for him. That means we have two more players to cover before we get joined by the one and only Mr. Danny on the ground, which is going to be super fun. Next up is the profile of, I believe, the pick of the week, actually. I'm not exactly sure why they went for Chin Wai Chin as pick of the week, but he is a super high roller crusher. So let's just go ahead and take a look at his profile, if we can. A WSOP bracelet winner. There you have it, Nana. No, oh, but uh, <laughs> oh, let me stop you. Kevin, they, they got the profile mixed up. So um, whatever you're reading now is not, not correct on him. They, they posted it in our group, but um, yeah. Uh -huh. So he doesn't Do have a bracelet, have this guy. Okay, so this guy has a bracelet, but he's not the guy that we're supposed to be talking about. All right, well, let's just go ahead and take a look at the hand history they selected for us. Is that a hand history that we should be talking about, Nanonoko? Yeah, that is it. Um, let's, let's, so it's also, wow, there's a blind level 400, 800. I didn't even know you can have that few chips in this tournament, uh, that few blinds in this level. I thought it was 500, 1000, but in this hand, three bets to Ace King. Um, that's a flop. And goes check, check on the turn. And it looks like he got Bert Stevens to to turn his hand into a bluff to a7 of course he's going to call to ace king here given the action uh but yeah well done but hard to say exactly what's how this guy plays based on this hand alone all right i mean in the lobby it is actually uh i guess the profile is just mixed up but the name the player is correct right because in the lobby there is I, um Chin. when you reach the final table of this event you everyone gets turned into a uh real name id um, so if your uh -huh. username was stupid player Roddy, you'd turn into just Kevin McCoy, right? So yeah, <laughs> I would go back to stupid <laughs> player Roddy. Come on, my lucky name. That means we have one more profile to cover, and that is the profile of a man that Nano and I are very familiar with, and hopefully a lot of you guys at home as well. It's been a little while since we spoke about him, but Rune F. Rui Ferreira is back. Obviously, a big name in the world of online poker. He has made plenty of final tables in Season 1. As you guys can see, five final tables, 19 caches. Has not done too well yet in Season 2. Apparently, this is going to be his first cache. Now, obviously, it's a big addition immediately, so that's nice. And hopefully, for Rune F, he can spin it up a little bit. Uh, he seems to be having a good time in the EPT in Barcelona. It's a beautiful city. Why the hell not participate every single time you can, I guess. I'm happy to have Runev back. I will never t uh, forget that one final table where he was our dominant ship leader. With like three or four players left. And then he had that little blow up with, I think it was sevens. Just jammed it for like five million chips. Got snap called by aces. And it all went downhill there. And I think, actually think he went out in fourth place. Even though at one point he had like 80% of the chips. It was a bit unfortunate, but we know that Runef is excellent. We know that he's a crusher. And I really think for 19 to 1 tonight, obviously you can't do final table betting anymore. It wasn't the worst pick, to be totally fair. Because I think he could spin it up. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Runef had. And after that, we are going to be joined by Daniel. This is going to be a lot of fun. Aces, Nano. Ace is good. Yeah, aces are very good in this. It's, it's a scary board, right? He raises, gets three bets, slow plays the aces. Comes jack nine four. Okay, that's a pretty good flop. He goes check check, and then the turns a king. Then he check calls, and the river's the king. He's like probably god damn. What if this guy's got king queen, or he's got like ace king or something? But he still ends up making a big hero call on the river. Um, you know, just because he's got pocket aces, he kind of underrepresented his hand, and his opponent did have pocket eight. So nice play by Ruin F here. Do you think he would call if he didn't have the Ace of Spades? Or you think that doesn't matter at all? It, it, it probably doesn't matter, but it's, it's definitely an important card because it blocks some flushes. Uh, but in this particular spot, I'm going to guess it wasn't that important. Just because 
his pocket aces, right? Maybe if he had, like, and say, an ace jack suited, uh, ace jack with ace of spade, you know, that's going to matter a little bit more, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, still definitely a pretty big call because I'm with you. There is, you look at that board and you can just see all the hands that are going to be your aces. But well, Drew and F making the correct call and making it to the final table. And because we rolled back the blinds, he obviously has some blinds to play with. I honestly, uh, I hope that he gets an early double up. I really think that could spice up this monstrous final table we have tonight. There is almost a million dollars up for grabs for the winner. I'm really excited now, now especially because we have a special guest as well. And we do got to be on our best behavior, but I think we can do it. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. And uh, I think we're going to get our friend. Finally, he's, he's on. First and foremost, I want to make sure you understand. I don't need you on your best behavior. I want the worst, okay? Then I'll feel more comfortable. So just bring it. Send it. <laughs> I don't doing? know if you ever listened to us, Daniel, but uh, a lot of the things that we say, they are not very... Well, let's just say GTO. It's quite the opposite, actually. <laughs> well, good! What do you think? I grew up playing GTO back in the 90s? We didn't know... You know what we played? We played... You know, look at that guy. Ah, he don't got it. I race. Right? Just like you see in the movies. There was no GTO back then, so yeah, a comfortable environment we're in here. All yeah, right, Daniel, welcome some, uh, to the show, obviously. <laughs> Go ahead, Roddy. Yeah, I believe you're in Mexico at the moment, is that correct? I am currently in Cabo. I'm streaming myself, not right now, but I'm playing the 5K PLO as I hang with you gentlemen on bullet number two, unfortunately, in a pot here with a couple of queens and whatnot, but I figured I'd take some time to uh, chat with the guys about this exciting final table because I was listening to you guys before uh, I jumped in and we got some really like some guys I know, you know, some some players that I've played with. Like obviously you got Thomas Murlocker who you mentioned. He beat me heads up in Barcelona in a 25K. And then of course the, you know, the OG, Eric Seidel. So I think a lot of people will be tuning in to see how he does, right? Because a lot there's always that question, right? How do old school guys, can they still compete against the young guns? And Eric's, uh, you know, Eric's one of those guys who respects this generation and is always willing to learn and improve. Mm -hmm. Well, we are very happy to have you here. Before I let uh, Nano go ahead and ask some questions, I don't know if you know Daniel, but we met once. Do you remember that? <laughs> I drink a lot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Where did we meet exactly? Uh, BlizzCon. The uh, BlizzCon 2018. You were there oh, for Hearthstone right. and... Yeah. That's right. Okay, now I remember. That was a, bl a blur. That was really crazy, just seeing that environment and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't know much about the gaming world, but Hearthstone was a game that I got addicted to, but now I'm sticking with poker. You know, <laughs> <pays better. laughs> All right, awesome. No, no, go ahead. So, Daniel, we've met before. I'm sure you know that, but um, Daniel... No, so your name was... Uh, <laughs> Your name was the guy who always calls me on TV and bluffs all his money off. I think I remember that, right? <laughs> that, that, that is correct. You did get me. I think I lost 100k to you over on that big game that one day, but I tried to forget about that. Today, it's like 10 years later or something like that. But Daniel, uh, let's talk about uh, the only bracelet bets. That's something you always like to do. Uh, obviously, the GG poker has got the nice bracelets going on, so talk about that. Well, I'm going to be grinding hard for the bracelets, but I didn't make any bets this year. Like, I've learned, or I mean, I do that for the fun a lot of the time, but really it doesn't add any incentive to me. I don't care if I'm playing a $200 buy-in or, you know, $10,000. I'm playing to win anyway, so I didn't really make any. I think I, I wonder maybe if, like, making those bracelet bets could have been somewhat distracting for me at times, right? A little added mm -hmm. stress. Like, when you see last year, I had a bunch of bracelet bets, and nobody won, and I'm like, all right, sweet. And then, of course, Connor Drynan in the last GG event, or one of the last ones there. He uh, he's the, he had like one big blind on the bubble. I was in there, I'm like, okay, sweet, we're safe. And then I look back the next day and I'm like, he freaking won? Are you kidding me? So there goes 100,000 down the drain. But So yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't need the extra stress and I'll just play because I love the game. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good approach because usually you're doing all these bets. You're doing that 25K fantasy draft and stuff like that. Um, but that's definitely a nice approach, I think. It sounds like... You were talking about, I saw you tweet, the PLO, PLO Colossus. You said you're going to try to get 400 big blinds. Is that something you're actually going to try to do, Daniel? Oh, I'm 100% going to try to do that because, like, I, I, the very first one I played, I got through with 124 bigs. So it's a very unique event for those that don't know how the PLO Colossus works. It's different than the typical ones where you take your best stack and you move forward. In this one, it's a bounty event. Not only do you take forward all of your stacks, but you also take forward all of your bounties. 
So now that could create some really, you know, interesting dynamics for a guy who's got 400, like, well, you're not gonna be able to bust me though, because I'm gonna have a bunch of chips. So clearly in terms of winning, it's gonna be, you know, it gives an advantage to people that are willing to just go bonkers. But if you are somebody who just wants to fire one bullet in the PLOS, for example, 400, think of the odds you're getting, right? It's gonna pay a bunch of spots and the min cash is gonna be massive. Like typically, you know, you have a min cash and maybe get twice your buy-in. This is gonna be what, eight, nine times your buy-in just for min caching, something along those lines. So it's good value for both. It, you know, it, it, it's not like doing this is plus EV, right? Firing every event. Once you get to a certain threshold of big blinds, it's just silly to keep playing them, right? but I'm kind of silly. So it makes sense for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you've been starting to play on GG, of course, now, and uh, I wanted to say some of your favorite features. I personally, do you like the emojis or like the squeezing cards? Maybe talk about that a little bit, Daniel. To be honest with you, like, I, I you know, cause obviously when I was in Vegas, I was playing on different software and then I get the opportunity to play on GG and it's an experience from when you log on and you hear the music, it gets me pumped right and then when we're playing just the sounds and the squeeze and the, the drama of the dun, dun, dun. but most importantly <laughs> we live in a world today where you know people communicate through emoji right and it's like really fun to see people firing their my face back at me saying ha ah, ah, or not sure if you know hmm, or this or like ship it so it's kind of fun you know I, I i really i just enjoy it i enjoy it a lot more than i have playing any online ever in my life the emotes yeah, really grow sure. on you, right? Over time, at first you're like, okay, what the hell is happening? But then you keep using them and then you get the timing right and then you have some banter. Sure. I think it really becomes fun the, the more you and play. And you know, and you know some people, and I, and I think it's fine, it's, there's a love-hate relationship people have with the river schools, right? Some people like, I hate this feature. Other people are like me, I love this feature because it does create that extra pain and drama. And I'm like a live player, so it gives you that little opportunity to squeeze out your own river card, which is a lot of fun for me. All right, we have four minutes until our final table actually goes live. I know you also played on Sunday, Daniel. I think tried a couple times. Uh, did you play with any of these no. guys at any given moment? What's that? No, no I, I, oh. yeah, I mean, I played with a lot of these guys in the past, but I actually got through on just one bullet. I did not have to rebuy, which is crazy because it had six hours of rebuys. And then I lost a key pot against Mark Rudolph, well, the all-in pot um, against Mark Rodola, who, who, who trapped me. He trapped me good. But yeah, I have experience with several of the final table members. I don't remember all the ones that are there, but as I said, Thomas has beaten me heads up in a turn for 25K. Long list of people who've done that. And, uh, you know, Eric <laughs> Seidel is another guy I've played with. And of course I know several of the other names here. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And in this tournament, I meant like particular on the Sunday, did you share a table with any of these nine guys? If you remember? I'm, I'll have to look again, because I'll, I'll, I'll have to look again to see, because I don't remember exactly who's there. But when we got that, I'll, I'll take a look and, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't remember. It was a little bit of a blur because I was oh. also playing the uh, the double stack. So I was two tabling. I was playing two tables <laughs> at the same time. Intense, time. intense. So get this. <laughs> at the same time, I think I was on stream. And I think for the first time ever in history of poker, I was streaming two different tables simultaneously. So that's a first, I'm pretty sure. It was tough, yeah, Daniel, wasn't it? I, I, <laughs> Well, I remember years ago when I was practicing heads up, okay? And I was playing uh, Isildur back, way back in the day. And I played a lot of heads up matches against different people, four tables, okay? And I kept up with the speed, no problem against these players, except one. One guy was insanely fast and his, happened, his name happened to be Nanako. This guy, like, <laughs> it was always my turn on all four tables. I was just going, what the hell's <laughs> happening? So like, I felt really good about my pace, but Nanako plays, He's the highest speed player on the tour. I, I, I would bet on him against anybody in that environment. If we had like a one second clock, I want Nanako to win every event. One second, one second yeah. shot clock. <laughs> 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 boom, boom, boom. <laughs> a long, that was a long, long time ago, Daniel. But uh, yeah, no, I'm excited. But uh, we, do we got the final table? Can we roll it up and look at who's how the seat draw is going, Roddy? Yeah, we can probably uh, start bringing that up. Daniel, we always make predictions as well about who we think is going to win it. Now, I know you're not going to be here for the entire thing, but I'm sure some people would love to hear who you think is going to win it tonight. Well, I mean, well, as you were talking, I, I listened to the various options in terms of who would win. And I like the, I like the pick of Thomas, right? But for nostalgic purposes, you know, you got to root for Eric Seidel, try to crack that number 10 bracelet, you know, which, which is, if he wins this one, he's got a real good chance of doing it, you know, this year. 
So probably be rooting for him as well as Thomas. Really nice kid. But I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go out on a limb and, and I'm going to say Thomas is going to seal the deal in this one here today. I have one more thing that I really have to get off my chest. I've ranted to Nananoko about this many times, but I actually watched a lot of your streams last summer. I thought it was always fun to reel you, but it drove me nuts that you're playing all these tournaments on Wi-Fi with a laptop and you're walking around the house. You're like, the Wi-Fi is not working. Uh, it drove me insane. Are we finally on cable internet? Oh, that was, yeah, when I first started doing it, right? I was on the laptop and going nuts. Yeah, well, actually here in Cabo, I have a pretty decent setup, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm like technologically challenged as you see, right? Like even before we're on this call, everyone's like, all right, just mute your camera, mute your mic and your camera. I'm like, I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> like, I don't, I'm so bad at that kind of stuff. So thankfully I have help uh, to do that for me. But yeah, we're, we're, we're well situated now, I think with solid internet, haven't had any issues, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, then I do think it's time for our production crew to maybe bring up the table because I think we start right about now. Maybe we can see a little bit of the seat selection process. Daniel, if you'd be the chip leader, I feel like in the old school it was always like you have to take position on the second biggest stack. But over the last two, three months, we've actually really seen the big stack switch it up here. Uh, what's your take on seat selection? So again, it depends for me uh, on the ICM situation and how much, like, how important laddering is in, in a certain spot. Like if the, if the ladders are very, very small, I kind of don't mind the idea of having the really short stacks on my right because they're dangerous stacks. Like when you have eight, nine big blind stacks behind you, it, like it kind of hampers you because you, you open for two and like, oh no, <laughs> like I made it all in for seven. I sort of am being priced in and it puts you in some interesting mm -hmm. spots. So um, again, I think it also depends who the chip leader is. Like what do their stats look like? Are they you know, three betting a ton. If so, you don't want that guy on your left, I would imagine. But I love this feature. Another one on GG for those that are just tuning in for the first time. At this final table, you look as you see what's happening now, you get to pick where you sit. And as the chip leader, you get to go last, which I think is really creates a lot of like, oh yeah? Oh, you want to sit on my left? All right, bro. Okay. I see how yeah, yeah. I see how it is. I see how it is. So certainly some jockeying will happen here for, for final seats choices. Yep. Almost like dropping the gauntlet. It's like, okay, well, take position on me. All right, we'll, we'll see how that works out in the upcoming hours. All right, so we are live. Cards are in the virtual air. Players wishing each other good luck and fun. I gotta say, I like the graphics tonight, Nano. Looks good. Yeah, it looks real good here. And obviously, you know, Daniel's making it even nicer in the top left corner here. But uh, who's <laughs> going to open it up first? Who's taking the first pot? Is it Chen Wei Chen of 97 Suda or is it someone else? Nope, he's out. Well, well, I mean, there's nine players left, so you're looking at pretty significant pay jump from nine to eight, right? Thirty-seven thousand dollars. So that should force some guys on the lower spot, lower end of the spectrum to play a little more carefully, right? You see Shin not even raising with the ace in the small blind. He could have just potentially, you know, took that one pre-flop. Obviously, when Eric has eight four off. Yeah, I could think be some uh, nerves as well. We've those seen... satellite winner. Sorry, no, no, go <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's a 1K. He satellited for 1K. Um, but in general, okay. we've seen in our past Super Millions, people have been just very ICM aware, just trying to get all these pay jumps. Today, uh -oh. it has to happen, right? With three Xs. What? Oh, no. Jax. Well, Jax we're going to have a king for our shortest player. Yeah, I don't see any, any world or any realm where Rui on two and a half million doesn't just get it in here. It seems like we're going to have a flip. And Thomas has, a, has an easy call, really, with Jax. Well, I wouldn't say easy. It's scary because Jacks suck. We all know that, right? I think we've yeah. established that Jacks suck. But yeah, this is well, this is going to be a raise and a call for sure. This is what you guys say is going to win it. He needs to hold this one to to really seal that one. I'm kind of worried right. for Thomas here because the rest of the table really didn't have any aces or kings, so there are plenty left in the deck. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. Card removal. It's coming. Squeeze, oh. squeeze. It's an ace or a king. You just feel it, right? You feel it. You feel it in your heart, and you know that's a queen or a king. Queen. It's a that's queen. That's a queen. Oh! The, the... oh wow. That's scary close. <laughs> Poor Ronev. That did not last very long. That was two or three hands, I believe, here. That means we're down to eight. The rest of the table gets a pay jump. Thomas Mulocker is now our Neil Chip leader. That is one hell of a hold, man, because at the, S the rest of the table, no, almost no one had an ace or a king. So most of them are still alive, but what a way to start for Thomas. Yeah, on yeah, many well, fronts, so right? Because when, when he has this big chip lead now with, you know, 50K in jump for the next spot, it, 
he's got a lot more freedom to really, you know, push people around a little bit. Now, Daniel, I don't know if you know, do you know about the final table betting that you can do on GG? I am aware, but you can give me a rundown on uh, where you can do that and, and, and how much you can bet and all that stuff. Yeah, so basically on our Super Millions every week, um, you know, we have a delayed final table like today. And you, you go into the GG client, you open up the table, and you can see the odds. I think the odds are based on what Poker Shares decides to give the odds. And today, uh, my commentator, Kevin here, at the last second, put money down on the guy who just busted. He lasted two hands. He put some money on Ruin F just now. He didn't even get any value. <laughs> oh, man. Not even a sweat. Nothing. Yeah, but it's okay. We also had money on Thomas Mulocker, and he was my pick of the week. So if those chips had to go anywhere, they had to go to Thomas. So I don't know why you're trying to needle me, Nano. It's all good. This was <laughs> this is teamwork between two of my picks. Why, why are you being mean? <laughs> what about this spot, uh, King Jack? Do you like the the call here, the three bet? What do you think, Daniel? Well, it's a tough. It's tough when you talk about ICM and final tables and a big stack like Thomas behind. It is a decent enough hand against the cutoff. Eric Seidel is a little on the tighter side. You can see his VPIP 23, you know, not incredibly tight, but on the nittier side, if you will. So, um, yeah, I think it's, I think you can do both. I think you probably have a mix where you three bet the King Jack some and you flat. And I don't know about fold. Fold seems a little bit extreme to ever fold there. Mm -hmm. Wow. So he just floated the King Jack high on this flop. Um, talk us through that one, Daniel. Well, I mean, he does you know, have position, right? And in a lot of spots, Eric's going to continuation bet and he's going to pick it up. This is like an old school, you know, uh, concept really, where, you know, if someone checks the turn, that means they don't have an overpair because they would bet, you know, it's as simple as that. So I don't, I don't mm. mind the float, but obviously now it's interesting to see how Eric proceeds because he's got the straight flusher. Does he decide to check raise this or does he decide to call? Yeah, they've got pretty much the same hand. And Eric Sido drills it. We're not going to chop this pot. Well, the boy, the board did double pair though. So Eric's got a king eye flush, which is great, but he does still have to worry somewhat about a nine. The thing is, there's not a ton of nines that Isaac would have unless it's like, you know, nine, 10 suited, maybe ace nine. There's not a lot of nines he's just going to call with uh, against the raise in this situation at a final. Yeah, well, it's action on Isaac Baron. I guess he's thinking, what does Eric Saito have to check all the turn that will check both through? It's a scary board if he bets, mm -hmm. but he gives up. Nice spot for Eric Seidel early on as he now chips up to over 8 million. That's pretty fun. King Jack versus King Jack. Lovely run out for Eric Seidel. Fun to see Isaac Barron being the aggressor as well with the worst hand of the two. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with that hand with the King Jack for Isaac, I mean, he does beat a couple hands. He beats Queen Jack, you know, and he beats maybe like mm -hmm. pocket fours or threes or something like that. So the question for him is like, does he think that he can get Ace, an ace to fold there, and he elected not to and figured he may have showdown value and decided to check it back. So, Yeah, no, that's a good point. I think the fact is if you got some showdown value, it's definitely worthy of taking it. You know, if you're sitting there with the eight high, right, like that's different. Maybe you're more likely to, to go for it on that spot. Yeah, I think that's what, like, a lot of the newer age players who have studied the game, like, have a deeper understanding of. It's like, okay, when I bluff, right, which hands should I choose as my bluffs, right? And usually they're going to be hands that like have no chance to win, right? Whereas a lot of the middling hands are like, you know what? I have some showdown value. Maybe we don't need to bluff this one in this spot. And you have better, uh, you know, it's better to construct a range that is completely drawing dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Thomas makes Thomas Mulocker is drawing pretty thin here. Maybe not completely dead, but it seems very unlikely he's going to end up winning this one. Now, that is a river card that he could potentially steal it oh, away I think he with has because to Francisco this flopped the world. But... Yeah, I think he has to bet. Yeah. I think Thomas has to bet this river. Just absolutely. He's, you know, right near. He's, he's not going to win this at a showdown after getting called in the flop. Uh, and he just has to rep, rep this ace. And he doesn't have to do it for big size, right? He can do it for like less than half pot. But he decides to give up. Wow. That's interesting. Huh. I'm surprised he didn't bluff that one. Now, I don't know if it would have worked. You know, know, Francisco's got gamble. We all know that. <laughs> what is he in nine bullets? He fired ninety thousand into this thing. But good news for him, he's locked up at least one sixty six. Yeah, that's true. He did get that pay jump just now. What do you make of him not betting on the river, Nano? You surprised a little bit? Not quite like the Thomas we normally mm. see, or? I don't know. Something's different when you put a million bucks up top, right? Like people like 
they they get a little less aggressive here and there. Some some spots where they think maybe they should go for it. Um, when it's close, you know, you want to be more cautious. Um, I do think I do kind of agree with Daniel. That's a good card to bet. Um, really, especially on the king queen two board, I feel like you know his opponent would re raise ace king. It was less likely for him to ace, right? He'd have to like check call like an ace seven backdoor hard draw something like that. So I think it's definitely reasonable to go for a bluff there on the river and probably would have worked too. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right because then you have to ask the question, right? If you don't bluff there, when are you ever bluffing in that spot? Ever? Right? Like you have to, I mean, theoretically, you're supposed to have bluffs in most spots, right? Well, if you're not betting that hand, you're essentially telling the rest of the table, hey, y'all, I'm not going to be like over bluffing right now. You know, so their evidence is like, okay, so far we see Thomas under bluffing. Now, the cool thing about poker is maybe he'll switch it up now. Oh boy, they all saw me, you know, check back this 10 and now I'm going to start bluffing them like crazy. That's what I love about the game. As much as we think we all have it figured out, there's so much to it in terms of the leveling wars and the back and forths. Yeah, and there's you know, so Seidel much wins. more leveling wars too. Yeah, how does this guy just keep winning chips, Eric? Said? He's just he's been playing for how long, Daniel? How you you would know actually, right? Like God well, knows how many years than I have. I mean, I remember I remember him starting at my first table in 1998 at the first World Series of Poker event I played, and I was nervous. And he ran a three-barrel bluff on me, and I called with uh, when there was an overcard, and, and I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. I went to bed that night going, yes, I can play with these guys. But, yeah, he's been around a long time. He's seen the progression of poker, the changes. And, again, he has the humility and understanding and respect, I think, for the younger generation and always has, where he doesn't sit on his laurels and say, you know what? These kids today don't know what they're talking about. Ah, old school poker, right? He's like, no, let me let me learn, right? Learn what they're doing so I can improve and become a better version of myself. And he's handled himself incredibly well against, you know, the toughest fields in the world. And obviously with the Super Millions, this final table, you're looking at, you know, the top of the class in terms of, uh, you know, skill level here. That actually leads me, uh, Daniel, like I know obviously, especially when WSOP is going on, that you play quite a bit more on GG. Are there any of these guys in the MTT fields that you've been generally impressed with that really stand out? I know there's plenty of good players, but are there a few that really make the difference for you? Oh, yeah. You know, obviously, you know, I've played a decent amount of high, uh, high rollers with a lot of these guys. Um, and I remember, I learned this, I don't want to say I learned this from Bryn Kenny, but I think it's important for me not to share who I think is really, really good because then it gives okay. up like a psychological advantage when I play them that I'm sort of afraid. But I will say there's one guy who's not here right now, but, uh, you know, that I played with in the high rollers in Vegas and is Jake Schindler. He's at like the top of my list uh, for the most part in terms of guys that I really think has it all figured out. So he's a, he's a tough cookie. Well, Daniel, I remember, I think I watched a little video of you, the U.S. Poker Open you're talking about, I think. You said David Coleman's real good, right? And we see him a lot on our final tables in the Super Millions. Yeah, he was very impressive. It was his first, you know, so in like, you know, look into live poker uh, tournaments and he had like four or five final tables and, you know, seemed really composed. I really liked the way he carried himself. Seemed like a really good dude. Just he fit right in like a glove, you know. Mm -hmm. Isaac's got a fold here for sure. Right. At this stage, you know, he's opening under the gun plus one with ace eight of hearts makes sense. But you get three bet from the big blind. It's very, very difficult to three bet from the big blind against an early position raiser and have that be balanced where you have enough bluffs. Most people do not. Right. If you raise under the gun and folds around at eight hand table and the big blind three bets, you're like, what the hell is that hand? And it's, you know, it's very rarely a bluff. So the ace eight of hearts is a good, good muck, I think. It's even more rarely a bluff when it's also a satellite winner making it to the final table. Like uh, if <laughs> yeah, it's Thomas exactly. Mulock or Michael Adamo, you might be like, you know what? They might be pulling a quick one on me. But most of the time when it's the guys that satellite their way in for 1K, yeah. they don't really make too many crazy moves. That's certainly something that I put on my radar. Okay. What is this guy's stats? What is his winnings? All right. $1,400. All right. We're going to attack him now because the bubble is 50000 <laughs> We're going to really push the envelope. All right, so let's, let's see what Eric, Eric Seidel, Seidel decides to do here. I think he's going to limp. He, he strikes me as the one who's going to limp and try to see a lot of flops. I think the vast majority. No, he's of, raising. Oh, wow, he's going to go ahead and raise. Well, this one he might he might hear from Isaac with a three bet with Ace Ten suited or, or a flat. Never going to fold, obviously. Yeah, it, it's a four X raise from Eric Seidel. Really, just trying to take it down. Sees the call. Wow. Okay, that's a problem. It'd be scary, right? If you open 4X and your opponent calls, doesn't the ace-jack-9 kind of seem scarier to see bet into? Big mm -hmm. time, yeah. Like, when you, when you get called for such large size, like, 
that sort of smashes the big blinds calling range. I think, you know, he's going to have some Jack 10 queen, Jack ace X, right. Ooh, uh, it's very, rare. oh, wow. And he's still going to bet this. So he's really just going I for like it this. here. Look at the sizing. Nine, 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 nine. Betting big. Now, I'm surprised. I'm surprised to see the size. That's a very big size. I think he's just trying to, you know, old school Win term, it. like define his opponent's range a little bit, find out where you're at. And when he gets called here, he knows, <laughs> all right, you know, jump ship. We're done with this one. Yeah, we often talk about some players having the I want to win this hand syndrome and they go broke on hands that they really don't have to go broke on. I think Eric said, I'll try to take it down pre-flop, tries it one time on the flop, but I highly believe that he's going to lose you know, a single I think Isaac single checks chip this here. back a lot. I think Isaac's going to check this back a decent amount. It's a really good hand to have in your like check back range on the turn, I think. You know, you're in trouble mm. against ace king, ace queen, which you could still be up against. Maybe you collect a little bluff on the river. The question is, do you want to deny equity? Well, how much equity is there? No, he decides to go for it. Wow, interesting. It is yeah, a very big pot, though. Isaac Barron had a check. He just thinks he's got the best hand and just doesn't want to give that random hand some free outs, I'm guessing. I mean, winning that hand brings Isaac Barron back to the amount of chips that he started this final table with. And that was only 16 minutes ago, but he was down quite a few chips up to this point. So I think it does feel good to just take one down of 3.4 million if you feel like you can. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm, I'm actually like watching final table and also just doubled up with aces in the PLO. Yeah, baby. <laughs> the best of both worlds. I was about to ask, how's the PLO going, Daniel? How many big blinds are we playing? Well, right now I got 78 big blinds. Just doubled up on bullet number two. So feeling good about it. Doubled up through, uh, well, whatever. Let's focus on the real the real players here playing for the big <laughs> money. Let's see. All right. So it went check, check on the flop here. Pocket 10 trying to pot control a bit. Tricky spot, phase seven. You got middle pair. I guess he's just trying to prevent those king queens from getting free cards with this little bet here. You would imagine, you know, class is happy to just call. He's got a gut shot as well. He blocks 9-10. This might just go check, check on the river. I, I think Thomas has enough hand where he doesn't think that he needs to bluff this one. And based on what we saw earlier where he didn't bluff with the 10-6, I, I, I'd be really surprised if he, if he bluffed here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, the A7 still beats, like, those uh, high card spade hands, like an ace, queen of spades and stuff like that. So definitely worthy of going for some showdown. Yep. Oh, Ooh, that's a nice hand to get. But it doesn't look like, if you look around the board, he's going to get a ton of action. He should get a call from the big blind. He's got five, six of spades, likely against the min raise. You know, that's good enough to see a flop with or deep enough to do that. So... We'll have, oh, and then you got Thomas. Well, he's not going to get frisky in the small blind, I don't think. And Isaac could get frisky. There's a whole bunch of friskiness that could happen here with some suited combos. People love I those think internet kids. They love that the suited queen nine suited, I tell you. There we go. Here's a call. So what we can see here is Isaac calling with the king jack off. He's calling with the queen nine suited. Both of those hands, most importantly, he's doing it from the button. So he's a player who likes to play in position quite clearly. Oh, boy. Ooh. Every, a, a little something for everybody. A little something for everyone. Gut shot oh, back. Checks to flush drop. Or flat. Yeah. A little trappity trap. Slow play. Bit of puck control. I think too. Isaac has a hand. He, in it's not like oh my god. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> Open it in the straight shots. Flush shot. shots. Gut shot. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Now you got to pray with the ace. You got to fade everything. A deuce. A seven. A ten. A heart. A spade. Like whole world <laughs> he yes. thinks he's crushing this board right now i think just like given the, it's checked around on the flop he just sees a bunch of draws he just doesn't know which one he's up against you know big bet from this joaquin call. for proceeding with caution on a double flush draw board and some straight draws and you would expect isaac isaac might just go bonkers here i doubt it but he's gonna at least call yeah, yeah. i think we can just call Closing the action. It'd be see a river card. Be crazy to raise now, because like he'd be representing like pocket fours and only pocket four. Can't oh. believe the six five is gonna scoop this one. Nuts. The nuts for Joaquim on the river. Now the question is how do you extract the maximum amount of value as played? 
Do you go with the, an overbet jam? Do you go small, hope to induce? I mean, there's a lot of options here that he's got to think about. Well, he sees two people have called, so it seems very likely someone's at least got like a queen jack type hand plus, right? I feel, I feel like you got to target those hands and half pots the bet he's going to go for. Yeah, a little less than it's half. Really annoying here with aces. Like, what would you do, Daniel, if you're sitting on aces I, here? I just call. I mean, I, I don't, I can't think of any other option that makes any sense here. It's just too good to fold. You have to pay it off and just see the bad news. I mean, anybody fold aces there? You gotta be nuts. Yeah, you might as you well just beat fold a lot of value. My gosh, the, right? like, <laughs> the thing is, there, like with the aces, you beat some hands. Joaquin would bet that is worse than that, right? Like if he's going to bet with king jack with ace jack, he's, you know, half pot seems reasonable, and aces beats a lot of his value. There's no way you can fold aces there. But of course, if Super you're watching at home and you see the whole card, you know, you'd be like, oh, easy lay down, okay, you know. <laughs> It's also kind of scary that Isaac Barron was obviously still behind there to act too. But, uh, right, but he didn't raise the turn, right? And the deuce, like, so actually with with, with, with Isaac behind there on the double flush draw, Isaac's not even a threat when the deuce comes, right? Because it's very, very mm -hmm. unlikely he has specifically 5-6. Maybe it hit ace-5 suited where he had a, you know, flopped the flush draw or turned it. Uh, but very few combos you'd have to worry about with Isaac. You're mostly worried about, well, this big blind led turn and river. So that's the big threat. So if Isaac had any sets, he would have raced it up before? I think on that turn, I just yeah. don't see how you're flatting with a set at that stage with that much money out there and a bet and a call in front of you. Two flush draws, straight draws. It just, it doesn't make a ton of sense to just flat with a set, you know, on the button there, I don't think. I agree. That'd be a lot of sense. Yeah, that's just extra tricky for the sake of being tricky, but it's not a good play, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, Thomas Mulocka obviously had 6-5 in that hand as well. Let's not forget about that. And he probably looked at that run out and he's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we got a new chip leader. I don't know if you noticed, Roddy. It's mm -hmm. Joachim Harald Oh, Jackson oh, no. Queens. This could be fireworks. My pick is getting fried here. Oh, yeah. Pocket Jackson. This is an auto all in for both players, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, what? not much they can do. <laughs> uh, let's see. So it's 30 big blinds effective, small blind three. I think I don't remember the profile of this chin. Chin Wei actually satellite in $525 satellite in. Daniel, does that change things? That maybe you can play the jacks a little slower, think, considering this guy qualified for $500. That's got, that's got the pocket queens right now. Yeah, I mean, I hear you, but man, I, I just don't think you're, you know, and Isaac's not the type of guy who's all that concerned about. You know, bubbling he's playing to win so he's not even considering for a second folding the uh the jacks here but you don't love it right you get you get three bet by the small blind and you know that range is going to be pretty nitty in, in these icm spots where there's a lot of value and just folding to to, to, to you know mm -hmm. inch up the thing is though there's really nobody that's super short right now right so it's not like you're waiting out for a guy who has like four big blinds so you kind of have to play mm -hmm. poker here interesting isaac's tank yeah. he's gonna just jam it in there yeah. Queens will make the call, and Isaac Barron receives yeah. the bad news that he needs a jack or needs to get very lucky. Running hearts is no good. Well, no. we wrong that on the turn. <laughs> Big double for no the Queens. Oh! Wow, the needle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it? Of course it was a jack, right? Who didn't know a jack was coming on the river just for added insult to injury? Well, speaking of jacks, we have a few more. And there's also an ace queen there for Francisco. So this could be a fun hand between Eric Seidel. Isaac Barron, your pick of the week. Nanonoko in serious trouble as he's left with five big blinds. Yeah, almost So for Francisco, the issue here, the issue for Francisco is he's facing an under-the-gun raise, right? Ace queen, if it was against a later position raise, he's going to three-bet that a lot more often. Against under-the-gun, ace queen does like, oh, it's okay. But it's not that far in front. And if you three bet and get jammed, you're like, you're basically having to fold, which is uncomfortable. So I like the flat here from Francisco. It's too good to fold, but maybe, you know, you don't want to be three betting it in this spot, um, you know, with the stacks the way they are. Yeah, no, you I totally agree with you, Daniel. Well, yeah, I like the flat too. Just because yeah. also you might three, you might waste your hand. Let's just say if Jack's jammed into you, you're going to fold today's queen. Obviously, you're flipping against that. You prevent that situation. You got position. Mm -hmm. You flop the queen here. 
I think he can go for some value on this flop. No? Jack's oh, always oh, a Jack. Get <laughs> Jack's never Deja lose. Oh, wow. Well, Seidel. So how do we play that. the ace queen now, Nano? Oh, man. I feel like you just got the call here just because you do beat, like, the same Oof. hand. You know, you got the same hand, king, queens. Well, well that card really river. saves Francisco. It saves Francisco because Eric can't even bet now. He doesn't beat a nine. He doesn't beat clubs. Doesn't actually have the ace king. So I was fortunate for Francisco. Unfortunate that the jack hit the turn, but you know, we were lucky that a card that frees the action came off, so he didn't go for the whole enchilada. Look at Eric Seidel. Jacks into aces. That's not an unpleasant way to play some <laughs> poker at the final table. And he's seen Thomas opening early position. King 10 suited. Chip leader. King six pretty suited. tempting. Yeah. Wow. There's a call. So Thomas pushing the envelope a little bit here. That's a it's a little loosey goosey, as we say. King six suited in early position. All these internet kids, they love the king six suited. It's just a solver special, you know, and the ace five suited. Well, I think this has more to do with like it being a final table and him trying to apply ICM pressure on his opponents, right? Because like I don't think Thomas is looking at that early in a tournament going, I'm raising king six under the gun. Now he's mold, folding mm -hmm. that. And obviously he's folding here. So it probably also helps Sidel. that Isaac Baron is super short and already folded. So then when Thomas opens, the rest of the table doesn't really want to get too out of line unless they really have it because they don't want to bust before Isaac Baron busts, of course. I think this is a really tough spot for Joaquim, right? He only has king 10 suited, you know, but he's getting a decent price. And, and really Eric Seidel, just so you know, Eric Seidel was the OG squeezer. Before that was a thing, right? Seidel was like the only guy back in the 90s and early 2000s that was squeezing. And he, that was like his go-to play to print EV. You know, raise call, here comes Seidel from the big blind. Fire away. He happened to have aces there, but I, you know, I've seen him do it with a whole lot less than aces in that spot. Hmm. Well, Isaac Barron is going to be able to get to it all in though, one Daniel. more time. <laughs> yeah. All right, look at all these hands. Say that? Isaac's obviously all in. So I'm just a few big blinds. Now he needs to get lucky and win a race. Nope. Jacks, Jacks are not very... Not well, end of him. diamonds? No, any diamond, squeeze any jack on the river. It. Oh, it's you a diamond! It. Of course it's a diamond! <laughs> of course it's a diamond! Oh, yeah. There you go, back in action, sitting on 1.8. So you're saying there's a chance. You know, this is a spot when you when you were what? down to work, you know you have 10 big blinds, it feels like a million, right? You're sitting there like, oh, I'm good. 10 bigs, whew, safe. Nice. Look at Seidel. And has Seidel aces has aces again? again? <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> How's he running? Oh my goodness. It's meant to be. He asked I mean, he won if with the, the poker game. gods will shine on him today. I think it is. So far, they're shining. They're like saying, Eric, we're giving you the tools. And now it's your job. Finish it off. Jack 10 suited out of position. Deep stacks, Daniel. Talk to me. Well, they are deep enough, right? It's, look at the price. The price he's being laid. He's only, it's only 600 more. He's put in 350. Very small three bet. Um, decides to fold it. That's the safe play. That's one thing that I think, you know, modern players do better than the old school guys is the raise size in those spots. They've understood that they don't have to raise as big. Right. In the old days, people would have just if someone opens for two, they make it 10x, you know, ah, I got to protect my hand. But um, even a small re-raise like that, if that's going to get a hand like Jack kind of spades to fold, it makes a lot more sense than a bigger size. So it was a, it was a disciplined fold from Chinway, um, because, again, for that price and his stack, he could have peeled and he could have taken a flop. But he needs a very specific flop out of position to continue. So it's a safe play for sure. You didn't want to play out of position against the goat, right? Like this it's Eric Seidel. When he's getting aces, aces, jacks, he's getting all the goods. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone at this table must be like, man, Eric Seidel is a lot more aggressive tonight than I expected yeah, him to be. And exactly. That's... <laughs> that, that's the thing that plays tricks on you, right? That's yeah. the thing that plays tricks on you. When you play with a new player and all of a sudden you see them playing a lot of pots, you think, Oh, this guy's a maniac, right? But like if you don't see his whole cards, you know, that could just be a case of no, they're just the deck is hitting them square in the forehead right now. Not sure if Thomas has any evil plans here, but it's going to be pretty hard to win this one. 
Yeah, I mean, he had some stuff he could do, right? Backdoor flushes, backdoor gut shots, all this kind of stuff. That's that's very optimistic. <laughs> so and then Anoka like does always tell be... me once, once you see the back doors, you can't unsee them. And he saw all of them, but wasn't stubborn. Look at that. So Isaac Barron's clock, and he's just re, uh, disconnected. He's down to 20 seconds. So share with the viewers exactly what happens when you run out of clock. Well, yeah, this is just the, the read time clock. I think if he's not back in 20 seconds, then this hand will be automatically folded. But obviously, he still has the regular shot clock for when he's back. Oh, right. This right. happens somewhat okay, frequently. Some thinking... Yeah, go ahead. So that's what, another interesting thing on GG Poker in the final tables. Everyone has a clock, and that clock is based on you know, how much they had saved up and how much time the average player is going to get. So what would happen, say, for example, if you lose all your time and you're out of time? Are you out of the tournament or do you get to play? What is the, uh, how many, how many <laughs> no, seconds no, no. do you get? You get five seconds and then there is an emergency shot clock that is in red and that also goes five seconds. So basically you have a little less than 10 seconds to make a decision. If you don't make a decision within 10 seconds, then you are automatically folding your hand. But we've definitely seen a couple of times where both players were out of time. And then you see some plays that they wouldn't necessarily make if they would have some more time. But yeah, if you obviously, you see the blinking red lights, five, four, three, two, one, you know your hand will be folded. We saw someone, I think, calling off for his tournament live on the line with King High against top set or something when he was out of time thinking that he just yeah. uh, had to make And I think, yeah, it's, it's interesting to know too, like you have to budget your time like chess because, you know, typically in a tournament, you get more time. So if you run out of clock early, you know, every period you get more time, not at the final table. That's your clock. That's what you get if you overuse your time and you're stalling, you're taking too long, which I think a lot of recreational players really enjoy and love the fact that, you know, people get essentially punished for wasting time, right? You actually mm -hmm. pay a price, which is valuable time later in the tournament where now you're only going to have five, 10 seconds to make a decision. So I, of course, love it. And I love the GG poker is always willing to innovate and, you know, push the envelope and take yeah. some chances on things. And I think the players, the vast majority really appreciate you know, the, the way that the clock set up. Listen, you know what you got. You're a class right now. You go, I got 11 minutes to finish this final table. So, oh, he's stalling for Isaac. Oh, oh, he's asking yeah. the question. You see that in the chat? So mm -hmm. Isaac apparently has disconnected. So the, the, he's wondering if maybe everyone should just stall for him. But I don't know that, that I don't know that's really feasible when everyone's on a clock. I yeah, guess they can use can the free time like is what he's saying. Yeah, oh, exactly. the free time. Yeah, this is. Mm -hmm. There is like always a couple seconds before your clock actually starts uh, running, and obviously Isaac Baron is the shortest stack. I believe Isaac Baron is back. This is something that happens quite often at our final tables too. Everyone seems to be super nice in general, and they will all use yeah. even a couple of seconds of the actual time bank if they're sitting on ten or eleven minutes anyway to let someone. Everyone's reconnect. on Wi-Fi, Roddy. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. I don't know how this is still a thing. But... <laughs> Million dollars on top, but we cannot get a cable. Wi-Fi only. <laughs> um, Daniel, I want to mention about the, the, the clock you're talking about. I think it's a pretty good innovative thing where they got the, the chess clock because you know how we got those, uh, those clocks in the live poker, right? But there's people out there who use max time bank on every 30-second shot clock, and I think this is a good counter to that. It is. You're absolutely right because that's the thing, right? So for example, let's say, you know, I'm a player who plays super fast, right? I, I generally fold right away, but now I'm on the river and I need a cup, you know, I need a minute or two because I, you know, it's a tough situation. It's complex, but I'm respecting the game throughout. Right. So, but I'm the one that gets punished by the shot clock system. Whereas the guy mm -hmm. who just under the gun with seven deuce offsuit sits there for 30 seconds, doesn't pay any penalty whatsoever, but that's the problem. It's not the problem of the player who folds instantly when they have seven deuce and occasionally need a minute or two. So the chess clock is the only weapon against that. And I hope to see us expand that even further, right? Where we even start like the entire tournament that way. Because I think that'll help a lot with that crucial bubble stage, right? So people mm -hmm. on the bubble, it's in their financial incentive to you know slow the pace down, but they pay no penalty for it. If we had a shot clock inherent from the get-go, I think that, uh, you know, then at least there's some penalty for doing that. Because as of now, you know, as long as you're playing within the rules, you know, and not being excessive about it because GG does have a rule, by the way, where if you are excessively stalling, you know, you can be penalized for that as well. I think that's something that we can all agree with and we can all get on board with. Shinji is our satellite winner as trip threes. 
And he's wondering on whether or not he should make a little bet. He probably will. Don't think he's going to get paid off as Chin Bai has absolutely nothing. Wow, he checks wow. the trips. Check. Oh, Very interesting. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky value. It actually could work out because, you know, Chin probably doesn't mm -hmm. win this at a showdown. No, he gives up. Good check back there. Well, on the positive note, everyone's going to see this and be like, okay, we got to be scared this guy's always trying to trap us now, right? So they can't just go for some bet check bet bluff lines. Mm. Yeah, you're not kidding. That's a very, very important variable, right? So now all of a sudden, when I check the river, that doesn't mean it's yours to take. No, 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 no. Sometimes I have the nuts in there as well. And, and you know, he's just showing that, he, that he's capable of doing that there. Thomas Mulocker will continue being somewhat aggressive as he's opening up King Queen offsuit of under the gun plus one. Eric Seidel will let it go. Does feel that Thomas really is here tonight to play, isn't he? Uh, no, no. Yeah, he's definitely here to play. Um, I agree. And I, I just, I think Eric Seidel's here to play, man. This guy raising the Queen Five offsuit, didn't he get jacks, aces, aces, aces? Uh, I, I feel like Eric Seidel at least played to today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So far, so good. Class is down to 18 big blinds, and he has ace nine here on the cutoff. Open it up, try to take one away from Isaac Perrin. Isaac is already a short of stack, obviously, at the table. Kind of annoying. Six three is obviously not great, but would have liked to see at least a flop it's... with it. Can't really do anything being this ah, short. Yeah, that was that's, that's borderline. I mean, suited is great when you're deep and you can make flushes and win these big giant pots. But they don't add a lot of value when your hand is six three, you know, and, and you're just gonna have to get it in. Yeah, like forced oh, to get in the bottom pair, there. you know, <laughs> that'd be terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, kind of like this from our chip leader. We haven't seen him play too many hands yet tonight, but what we've seen so far is good, and he's opening up queen nine suited under the gun. It's pretty cool. It's interesting, yeah, like you said, at the final table, you see hands from early position that are a little wider. We saw, you know, King Six suited from Thomas, the Queen Nine suited here, that you don't see, you know, in a normal situation until you get to the final table. And the big reason for that, as we've suggested, is just by folding, sometimes you win money. And that's that's a unique aspect of tournament poker in the late stages. This could be very here. bad news for Thomas Mulocker as he has pocket nines, Klaas has pocket kings. Isaac Baron with six big blinds will let go of ace deuce offsuit. Uh, what's the play here, Nano, for Thomas? He's got 20 big blinds. I think normally you just three bet go with it. Um, well, he's going to flat call here. Do you, do you like this, Dan, or do you prefer to three bet kind of put pressure on a 20 big blind guy? Well, I, I, I'd certainly like a mix for sure. Um, and I think the stack, if the stack was like 17 or less, I think, you know, just three bet getting in is better. But like at 20 at this stage, the opening range probably a little bit tighter. I think I'd lean towards having the mix be higher in flats than three bets here with the nine. So I like it. I like it. And this is going to be a problem for him with three undercards to his nines. Didn't we see this before, guys? 6-5 against aces. This time it's 6-5 against kings. <laughs> Same players. Ay, ay, ay. So interesting you're seeing him yeah. lead here. He's leading because that flop... You know, that hits a lot of hands that the big blind can have that the other two players are not. Ooh, wow. But he's going to get the bad news here that he's getting raised. And now for Thomas, you know, there's, a, there's a possibility. I think could... saves Thomas. Possibly. I don't, I don't know. This is tough. It's not, it's not over yet. I mean, he could call here, right? He could raise. He really can do all three options. Yeah, I would say this is one of the toughest spots I've seen in a while. I don't like raise. I don't like raise against two no. players. But, but, but mm -hmm. wow, he is going to raise. Okay, he's raising to get so class in is, and probably get walked him yeah. out. So I think if he See, gets further action no. for Joaquim, he would fold. But he's calling off the other guy. Well, class knows what he's going to do. No, it's not Thomas. Or it's not Joaquim who saves Thomas. It's Thomas who saves Joaquim potentially. Because hitting that open end would have been hard, obviously, with Thomas Mulock having two nines. I mean... Is there a world where class folds kings here? <laughs> no, I don't think no so. Way, I mean, right? you're literally, no. you're only worried about combo, the following combos, aces, pocket eights, pocket sevens. That's it, right? But then mm -hmm. the question is, well, what the hell does he have? Because those are all reasonable hands, right? And you would expect queens and jacks to three bet and tens. So he, I guess with kings, you, I mean, wow, it's a tough spot. If he laid this down, I'd be incredibly 
shocked, but yeah, you just, it, you really look, don't beat a ton. It looks strong, but the thing is you got, you got so little blinds left and I think that's why he's going with yeah, it. Yeah. And now Thomas, can he yeah. fold? Maybe he Thomas can. Thomas now folds for 1.7. Eight big blinds? Price is good, but the hand is eight. dead every time. He beats Ace uh, Eight. Back doors. Yeah, but yeah. can get some back doors as well. They can pray for a six. That is not a very good turn card. Thomas needs a nine and a nine only. That's not a nine. Not enough pips. So Klaus wins a monster pot. And where I thought maybe Joaquim could have saved Thomas, it was the other way around instead. Six five would not have gotten there this time. A little bit of justice for Klaus, who did get a bit unlucky earlier with his aces. We have some players with that. Everyone's got a hand, every hand. Joaquin's got tens, nine ten suited in the big. Seidel with King Jack. I mean, where do they get these hands? <laughs> Let's see. So pocket tens flat, pocket tens three bet. Looks like it's gonna go for a flat, keep it keep it small. Oh, this always wow. the drawing hand wow. that gets the blessed flop. Yeah. Well, an easy check fold for Joaquim now with the two over cards. And you expect Eric to bet a decent amount of the time. Sometimes you should check this back with top pair. Yeah, they're, they're pretty deep. 45 big blinds. He's going to go. <laughs> this Eric Seidel, he's got sticky buttons. He just pushed the same number six times. He did 7777. Seven, seven, seven. He did 9999 nine, nine, nine earlier. Now, if you're Francisco, do you turn this into a bluff there? I think call is predominantly the best play here. You could potentially, think you know, you, win yeah. with a bluff on the river. Because if you check raise and get it in, it's quite bad considering Isaac Barron's sitting there with five big blinds. You still got to respect the exactly. ICM part of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tricky spot. But now, actually, he could potentially check fold against the large size. It looks like Francisco is trying to pretend he's got a king or maybe even consider leading the paired board. Let's see what he's thinking. That would be a really good thing if the turn was a queen, because a queen is very heavily yeah. in Francisco's range in that spot. But the king itself, it's not as much of a thing, but it, you know, it is, certainly. And now Eric has a dilemma. Do, does he raise to charge the draw or flat and continue to slow play and hopefully you know, pick off a, a river bluff? Well, I feel like... I think I like call. Yeah, I like the raise here. All right, I said I like call, you like the raise, whatever. <laughs> I, li I like that you guys like different things. That's the beauty of the game. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I like the call, I like the raise. <laughs> There's no absolute answer, right? That's the good thing about poker. Like, yeah. you, really, you can always talk yourself one way or the other, too. I think I think Eric oh, raised say, rather though. quickly there, mm -hmm. or is that you think that didn't matter? Because that was pretty quick. I think it depends. I, think... I, I don't know that I would spend a lot of time trying to read into the physical, the, the, the online tells of Eric Seidel. You know, I think he's going to know what he's doing in those spots. But, you know, if you're into that. By the way, the, the GOAT is the chip leader of the tournament, Eric Seidel. Yeah. He's on his way to that bracelet. Those poker gods are just raining on him right now. Well, I'm going to bid you guys do. I'm going to wish Eric Seidel good luck in his chase. I'm going to continue with mine here. It's getting down to the nitty gritty in the 5K PLO. I enjoyed it, guys. You guys do a great job with this. Uh, awesome opportunity for fans of the game to just really see what the big players do every Tuesday in the Super Million. So thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Thanks, Daniel. Daniel. Stopping by. I really appreciate it. Good luck in PLO. May the PLO gods be with you. And uh, any streams <laughs> coming up, Daniel, before you go? Any schedule? Well, I'm going to let you guys forward? stream today. I'm going to let you guys stream today because, you know, I want this to be the focus. And then I'll probably be back to streaming the rest of the week. I'll stream tomorrow. PLO and then I'll stream Thursdays uh, 500. The heads up, probably not because that's a little much. You know, heads up is like really intense. So I probably won't stream that, but there'll be streams for the rest of the, the series all the way through the main event. All right. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Good luck. All right, guys. Have a good day. Bye bye. That means that now we are just, oh my God, he leaves the Nanonoko. Look at this. <laughs> Queens, tens, Why did he and leave? jacks. Yeah, this would have been a Get sick Daniel end to talk about.
<laughs> uh, it was obviously a little bit hard, guys. We have a bit of a delay because Nanonoko is in Australia. I am in Europe and Daniel is in Mexico. So there is a bit of a ping issue where sometimes we end up talking over each other. That's obviously not on purpose. Hopefully you guys understand that. But Nanonoko, this hand could be bananas. Talk to me. It's lit. Well, I think the hardest, the trickiest part is going to be what does the pocket jacks do? Because the thing is, the reshoves for 23 big blinds, it's, it's not a lot, but it's also not a little. But I feel like the jacks mm -hmm. is crushing these two tens in this spot way too often. I don't know. Can he really fold this? Like, I don't, th I don't think I would. Like, I feel like this is always our eternal debate, right? Can you fold the jacks here? And we pretty much always said no. I don't think this is a moment I could fold jacks. <laughs> I think, yeah, there it is. And the Queens is in an amazing spot here. He's not snap calling because obviously it's annoying, but yeah. you got to call this. It's 40. Yeah. You just got to. It is very scary, but you do have to call. You're like, please don't have kings or aces here. That'd be absolutely disgusting. And then it's just like, you already like hover above the call button right now. Then you take a moment. You're like, yep, got to call, got to call. Ooh. You can't fold this, really. Like, no. I can fold jacks here for sure. The queens is mm -hmm. just too strong. If my opponent will reshuffle queen jacks, which it is doing, this is a mandatory. And you beat ace king. Yep. You know, I wouldn't be worried about the guy who reshoved on me. I mean, and if you lose, yeah. if you lose, you still got three, like two. Oh, oh my, my god. god, he folded queens, Roddy. No. Joachim no. Harodstadt folds Queens. It's Jacks versus Tens. The Tens do turn an open ender. It doesn't change that much. Four extra outs. Can he find that? Could be a six, right? Could that be a six. six. Oh my it's god, it's a, a six. six! It is a six. <sighs> Klaus is disgusted, but what he doesn't know is that he dodged the bullet because it could have been a whole lot worse. Oh, Joachim folding the Queens there. Pre flop fold of Queens, Nano insane this is these big pay jumps that's why it happened but my gosh francisco oh but he did he did get he was going to win the hand anyways but Klaus also bailed out in the hand he would have been eliminated out of the tournament had the queens make that call <laughs> he thinks he's Not he thinks sure he's is. got unlucky he got lucky yeah could have been a whole lot worse francisco thinks he got lucky but in a weird way he got unlucky because he should have won four million more <laughs> Do you think that if Isaac Baron was out, you think Joaquin makes the call with Queens? He's more likely to make the call for sure. Um, but man, I I don't know the answer yeah. to this question for for him. I think a lot of guys would make this call. The other players at this final table, but Joaquin doesn't normally play these uh these tournaments, right? He's a PLO cash game player, I believe, um, because there's no such thing as a PLO tournament pro out there. Um, and I don't know, man. That just seems a little tight. I know it's the big pay jumps, but this, it's just a big spot, Roddy. I don't know. Can you get behind it? No. Like, if he if he was the one with jacks there, then I think that is one of these very, very rare spots where you can talk about folding jacks. And even then, it's annoying, but can't get behind folding jacks if Joaquin was the one with jacks. But uh, I, I do not fault class for jamming jacks at all. I think that most people would do it. It's like just a good moment where you normally are happy to get it all in. But I, I Queens, no. I don't think we can fault Queens. Man. It's a yeah. bit much. Thomas Mulocker would have snapped that off. Isaac Barron would have yeah, snapped yeah, that yeah. off. Francisco himself would have snapped that off. I think even Eric Seidel would have snapped. Klaus would have. Everyone would have snapped that off. I don't know what. I guess he just saw 11 million chips. And he's like, I don't want it to be 2 million chips. And be mm -hmm. like, I knew he had aces and kings. But just <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think he would have folded think... kings too? <laughs> nah, I don't think he would fold kings. But I'll say this: it's much better to call queens and ace king. I think in that spot, I think ace king you might be able to get away with maybe folding that. But queens, no, I don't know, Rowdy. You just can't do it. Yeah. On one hand, I can get behind it because he might think like, wow, that's like that's going to be 8 million chips. This is 75, 80% of my chip stack. Isaac Baron is so short. I just want to make them sure that I at least... Like right now, he is easily on track for, let's say, a top four finish, right? With the 11 million chips he has. And maybe in a world where he just convinces himself that Klaas does have aces or kings there, 
he will no longer be on track for that. But yeah, I, uh, the thing I is, I don't know. I think Queens is Roddy, just a call there. If we look at the stack sizes more carefully, top four is not really a lock in my opinion, right? Like, sure, he's in he's no, he's not. in second place right now, but like guys of ten million, eight million, eight million, eight million, like it's not a lock. These pay jumps get good. They're already good, but they get expen like exponentially better as we knock out a couple more guys out there. I, I do think it was tight. We're going to see mistakes in poker, just we always do at our final tables. We're going to see maybe a little bit more from some people just because we're playing such high stakes. We're also going to see some world-class play. I think that was a bit of a mistake. I think he knows. Well, obviously, he knows it when he saw the two, the two cards. He didn't want to do it, but, you know, he... It's the page. It's the page. Jumps, he really. have... It's just a big top prize. Mm -hmm. I guess in the end, he would have broke even on that hand, right? Just guarantee himself a pay jump because yeah. I guess what he gives to Francisco, he would have won over Klaus. Agree. Oh, oh, Joaquim, let's go of the Queens. The rest of the table is obviously going to see this. Still, these dudes will be watching this final table. It is, of course, streamed with a 30 minute delay. Look at Shinjis, by the way. We haven't been talking a whole lot about the other satellite winner. Still getting in the mix, Nanonoko opening up a king queen here from the hijack. Yeah, he's got the king queen from. It looks like he's based in Montenegro. Obviously, flopped well here. Um, <laughs> yeah. You just yeah. combine two nice. countries, man. <laughs> Malta and Montenegro. You're like Malta. Oh, I said Montenegro. I didn't say. I didn't say. I, didn't, <laughs> I said it funny, right? Because I was like, how do I say yeah. it? How do I say it? <laughs> I've been there. It's a really nice place, Roddy. Really. Yeah, you guys had a. Uh, a uh, big popular the, the there, yeah. Triton series, right? Yeah, I was so surprised yeah. when I saw that was in Montenegro. I was like, "What Triton in Montenegro?" But cool. I, I've I've never really heard of Montenegro before. I only heard about it in the James Bond movie because they go play Monte. Uh, Daniel Craig goes there and plays like a big high stakes poker tournament over in Montenegro or whatever. But look, King Jack, Ace Jack, it's limping to King Jack. I'm not surprised from this based on seeing the Queens fold earlier. Probably gonna limp call, I imagine. Call. And he oh flops top <laughs> two against the ace jack. Could be some fireworks here as we're getting ready for our first break in four minutes. All the players will have a four or five minute break, and we're gonna take a little break too. Almost a million dollars on top for the winner tonight. As Francisco will just bet here, ace jack here. Probably thinks that this is a pretty decent flop for him. Makes a pair. He's got a gut shot. But Joaquim flopping top two. Will he let this one go, though, Naranoka? <laughs> yeah, he's not letting this go. Like He's going to play cautiously, of course, um, just because they're just big pay jumps right now. Um, Francisco probably will want to check back this turn, I imagine. Unless he's going to go for a small eye on this. River. Oh. Ooh. He's going for some Actually, value. a pretty big right. bet. I'm a bit surprised by this. Um, guess he just thought there was a lot of funny oh river cards. And he hits the river. What well, he was just getting he's getting punished right now. Please fold those queens. We're gonna Snap. give you that guy a nace. I do not really fault Francisco, of course, for uh, snap checking back there because a queen does make a straight and. He might think, like, at first, you're like, yay, and then you're like, oh, I don't know, actually, no. That's like one of these funny river cards where you're kind of happy to see it, but at the same time, not that happy because you're like, he got there, didn't he? It's like, no, he actually didn't. Klaus got nines. Francisco, the man who started this final table off as chip leader and is now pretty much back in the league, has literally half a blind more than uh, Eric Seidel before this hand started. He falls ace 10. Yeah, I don't mind this folding into it. 20 big blind open under the gun. Where were you in the Montenegro? In Budva or something? Budva, I think you you're exactly. That's, that's the thing. That's the only city I know. So it probably yeah. is Budva. Yeah, I'm guessing. You were near the ocean or the sea? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. There's like, you can see the ocean, um, the hotel and stuff's uh, right right next door. And they, they also got this like little island. I forget what it's called, but like, it's like surrounded by water. It's like literally like a circle, but it's connected by like a road, a little bridge or something. It's just a really nice place. Uh, I didn't expect it. I mean, not that. I've just never heard of it, right? I didn't expect it was going to be so chill and relaxing. It's just like, it feels really high class, like just where all the high rollers should be playing poker. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. Yeah, I've never been. Actually, never really managed to go to the Baltic countries, which makes me sad because I'd love to check out Croatia, Serbia, Montenegro. I think they're all very nice. We are going to battle here. What the hell are these flops? King nine flops is straight. Ace nine obviously flops an open ender. Every flop has just smashed someone so hard so far today. It's only been one hour. Ace yeah. nine is it's a good draw. Mm -hmm. Makes a call. Funny how they both have a club as well. Chin Y has the king of clubs. Klaas has the ace of clubs. Klaas just praying for a king of diamonds or something on the, the river. Yeah. Uh, this is hard to call though for Klaas because he really doesn't have that much behind. He's got less than 20 big blinds. He could be drawing dead. He can say he's king. Um, I mean, you know, you know what I mean by drawing dead. Anyways, king nine. Still the best hand. I think Chin Wei, he, he bet small on the turn because he's like, I want value. I'm not letting this guy get away. He bet less than half the pot. Is he going to go for one of those little tiny bets again, like 1.5 million or something, 1.2? Like, I, I think satellite like, winner, obviously right? there's not much class could do, but I wonder what happens if Chin Wei would just check here. Will class pull the PLO move and be like, I've got the ace of clubs, <laughs> but Chin Wai is not even going to give him that opportunity. He will just bet his straight. It wasn't the nuts, but it was good enough to win a big one. He gets up to almost 10 million chips. And that is going to do it for our pre-pre-show, our pre-show, and the first hour of the final table of this 10K WSOP Online Bracelet Edition. Hopefully you guys enjoyed having Danny on. It was a little bit difficult with the ping and the delay that we have to deal with, but being across the, the globe over here, but I think it was a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Nano and I are gonna take a little break and we'll see you guys in four minutes. On Sunday, it is the 1K GG Masters, the $2 million guarantee, and it's a freeze out again, yes? Oh, it's great, Jeff. You can only go broke one time. Hey. And you can play a satellite to get in the mix. Play a satellite, which I know you need. That 1K buy-in, not within the Brent Hanks bankroll. This is a two-day event. Again, it is a freeze-out, and it does resume on Monday after level 32 or when we have reached the final tape. Hello, everybody. Daniel Grano here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations, you know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's going to fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flopped the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see, in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry. You don't even have to lift a finger. First, Simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop up window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG.
Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Radar holds things. Oh my god. Michael Adamo is the best. Welcome back to the second hour of the High Roller Super Millions WSOP Online Bracelet Edition, where Nanonoko is back, I'm back, and it seems like the first hand is already on the way. Joachim Harold has pocket eights. Let's see if he decides to open it up or not. What do you make of the first hour overall, Nano? It was obviously a bit busy, a bit hectic in a way, but anyone that stands out for you so far? Um. I was going to say it's been sick boards. <laughs> that first pretty uh, action heavy uh, and very interesting hands actually throughout that uh, whole first hour. Right now. Wow. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I can't really say who stands out right now. But Francisco is playing the way I expected him to play when he got that, when he started the day with the chip lead. I think his two eights are yeah, gone. Well... Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if we're folding queens, even though it was a bit different, I know it was a three-way and everything, but I don't know if Joaquin wants to see a flop. It mm. does make the call, but gets outflopped by the 9-8. And this is actually the kind of board where you almost feel forced to continue. You can't really be folding eights on a 9-3-5 board, but we know that it's uh, incredibly unlikely for Joaquin to win this hand at this point. It is a relatively, I want to say big bet, but it's actually only a little over three big blinds. Well, almost Yeah, four. it's a quarter pot. Oh, but he's definitely going to check all these two eights. Um, I think both guys are. They want to get the showdown. I think at this point. Yeah. Francisco, he's either going to check this turn or he's going to bet like another quarter pot and check back the river because he expects those ace queens and stuff to check all the flop pocket eights, pocket sevens. He's going to go for the check style. Joaquin probably thinks he has the best hand now, but yeah. betting would be a little bit wild. Yeah, if he bet, if he's betting, he's betting to kind of just block bet. Um, mm -hmm. But block betting your chips with at this final table is it's, it's, it's a big risk, you know. Like you're throwing in 1.3 million out there, and this guy three bet you with like a random nine, you know. Yeah, he's doing a block bet, um, quarter pot. Oh, the nine's never folding this, not for this size, I don't think. Um, I don't know. I just can't. It's just it's just too little. That's the thing. Like, I don't think the nine is like woohoo, but this is no. as good of a price you're gonna get um, for what's happening right now. I'd be very very surprised. Yeah, if we are three betting the nine eight, and you end up with top pair on the end. I think you kind of just have to call off here. Francisco may think that he's going up against an over pair, of course, but. For this price, with that amount of money in the pot, you still have top pair. Yeah, the the He's price is to just too, look. I don't feel good about calling a bet just given the action, but when it's a quarter pot, I'm just like, it's a discount to me, right? If I'm playing the half pot, I'd be real tough. Maybe I don't know what to do. A quarter pot is just so little, Roddy. Francisco really thinks he's beat here because I don't think he thinks his opponent's yeah. betting ace queen right now. And you don't put him on eight sider when you have nine eight. So that's like Correct. one of the hands where you can normally think. Man. So then what do we sixes? But then the thing is yeah, oh, good call. Okay. I, was, I was gonna be 
I was going to be in upset if we just keep seeing some insane folds throughout today, but wow, sick. And Joaquin probably thinking that he had the best hand after it took Francisco like three years to call on that river. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, my, my eights might actually be good here. I'm going to get hero called by, uh, by something I beat. Yeah, like an ace king high or something like that. Wow. Well, Baron's in. Oh, the no. end of, yeah. Probably the end of Isaac Baron here decides to go for it with the, the what was it, six, seven big blinds that he has. Queen Jack under the gun. Chin Y has aces. Do we just call or do we raise Nano? He's probably going to min click it. I don't think he wants to let Eric Seidel sitting with it. Okay, he's going to just call, but. <laughs> Brutal for Isaac Barron, man. Didn't really get to play today. I mean, he did play some hands, but just absolutely brutal. He's going to need some runner, runner magic here. Running queens, running jacks, running two pair or spades, perhaps. There is the spade. spade. Keep Isaac us Barron alive. Needs the spade. There's oh. not a spade, unfortunately. The 10 of clubs, no good. Isaac Barron will be eliminated in eighth place. Nana Noko's pick of the week is done. Shin Wei is now Brutal. second in chips, actually. Yeah, the guy's played pocket aces, and then he played the which what the pocket jacks. Is that him? King nine, K king nine. He flopped the oh. straight with king nine. Oh, then what? He got a double up. A oh, queens against me locker, maybe jacks or something. Early. Oh, here we go. Wait, did Francisco just open queen four offsuit? I, I just thought he was in the big blind. He's opening it up. Yes, I like he is opening up queen four. Thomas lets go of pocket eights on the big blind. Francisco will probably let go of queen four. Uh, was that the hand where Thomas Mulocker had knights? No, that was with class. I think it's mostly the king nine hand, man, that really gave Chin Wai all the chips. Yeah. I'm just reading the chat randomly. Some guy's like, he's from Norway. The J is pronounced like the Y in a yes. So how would you say that? Why? Yeah, he's he's saying it's like a why. So Yakim, is that what he's saying? Yeah, I don't know. Yes, yeah, no. Yakim no instead of Joakim. I don't know. We can go with just Harochstad, which is definitely yeah. how nobody how would say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, Thomas out with Ace Jack folded. Chin Wei, to be fair, has been quite tight. So I like that three bet he just did of the Ace Jack suit. It got a lot of credit. Um. Mm -hmm. He is now second in chips. Only Francisco still has a few more. Eric Seidel, of course, still going strong too with 12 million. So earlier you asked had me his little... who's standing out, um, Roddy. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, with earlier and the hands I just had, I think Francisco is going to spice things up. He's opening queen four. I think at this point we've got yeah. big chip differences. I think he's going to try and uh, push his way to the top, try to get that bracelet. Um, and obviously, 3 betting 9 8 suited. It's, he's just setting that kind of tone like, I'm going to take this tournament down, and you guys are going to play for second and third place. Our Norwegian buddy, Harald Harrodstad, just jammed like 19 big blinds with ace 9, small against big. It's obviously uh, something we've seen before, but this final table, when the pay jumps are that big, still takes a little bit of courage. Yeah, he did get one pay jump so far. But remember how you're saying like a top four is locked up for 11 million? And I told you, it's not. If you look at the chip stacks, right? This guy is sitting on near the bottom of the chip counts now. Two eights, that should rip it in, right? Like, well, get I, that fold equity. I said that it's locked up for him when he folded the queens. And that's maybe how he could justify folding the queens. But it's obviously yeah, not a guarantee. And I didn't think it was a guarantee either. I mean, now we have kind of a weird situation where we still have Shinji's on the right side. I feel like he has barely played a hand. As oh. Eric Seidel is back, and he's got kings this time. Nines <laughs> on the big blind, by the way. Kings versus nines. A hundred percent that's going in. But man, Eric Seidel, this guy's like... He plays the queen five quite ridiculous, right? The small line. And then he gets aces, kings. And he just gets paid off every single time. And king jack. And then he makes the trip kings. Like, this is just a beautiful day. The poker gods are shining on this man right now. Well, when you say that, I feel like we're going to see at least one nine on the flop. But let's see if the kings can hold. So far, they can. 
King still good. King yeah. on the turn is going to lock it up for Eric Seidel. Class, a previous champ of season two. Gets the set, by the way, on the river too. That's the second time we've seen that tonight. <laughs> he started with Isaac Baron as well when he had jacks against Queens. Got a useless set on the river. Queens and jacks here between the two big stacks and an ace jack suited. And Thomas Mulocker is the one opening it up with ace three. The wheels are coming off, Nanonoko. All hell broke loose. Yeah, well... <laughs> You know, we were really deep stack earlier. For some reason, we're just flying with some players right now. Here's the three bet. Chin Wei is not folding these two jacks right now. The frequency of Francisco, is, he's just three bet recently. I know he they don't know it's 9 8 suited yet, but he's going to put in the four bet here, I believe. Make it like 3 million or something. He would really blow up yeah, if he but... just jammed it, just trying to. Oh, he folded. All right. Wow. What? That's just some sick fold. It's the right fold. But it is some sick folds right now. Maybe a little bit like, okay, I, I'm sitting really well here. Do I really want to go for it? I'm very surprised, wow. though. Very. That is such a Hands crazy over, fold. Though. And it was relatively quick, too. That's insane. Yeah, it's just one of those, I hope. Well, Thomas knows, plays a lot of Francisco. He knows he would punish him in this way. So that's why he's not folded to Ace 3 suited yet. It's a small size. He might call it a 3. He might even jam, thinking like you're trying to punish me. He might fold. He is going to fold. But uh, you can see that there's a lot of history between these guys right now. Damn. That fold of the jacks it was relatively quick. And it was the correct fold as Francisco did have queens. That's wild, man. Most of the time when people fold yeah. jacks at our final table, they are quite wrong. Sometimes they're even super wrong. This time he was quite right. It's insane. Yeah, and that's there's something special about our super millions when we do the special editions because it's like a million up top, right? Like people just make some insane plays, whether it's a crazy bluff or a crazy fold, you know. And right now we're seeing some pretty tight folds right now, um, because of Eric Seidel he's got pockets. This is a, this is a not a good hand for him, right? Because he's been getting aces, kings, and jacks all day. Now he's got eights. I probably going to flat call. Yeah, I think we can just call here, play a flop. Wow, he folded the eights. Eric Seidel, wow. I'm so very surprised. Maybe it's because a because... small blind. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, he's, no, he's sitting on 60 ahead. big blinds. He's... <laughs> it's funny of our little lag. But anyway, 60 big blinds in position. And for a hand that I think plays, it doesn't play the, it's not the easiest to play. But when you flop a set, it's really easy to play. Um, I'm very surprised there with that fold. Could be because both Thomas Mulocker and uh, Joachim, or Mr. Harochstadt, since we are mispronouncing Joachim, are quite short. Maybe Eric Sedel was worried that if he would flat call, that it would tempt one of these two shorties to jam. And then obviously there's not too much you can do anymore with the pocket eights. So. Yeah. Right. But uh, you, we got to keep in mind, Eric Sedel probably doesn't know how loose Francisco's been playing of the last 15 minutes or so, right? Because he's mm -hmm. just kind of ramped it up. Uh, just the start of this second hour here. Who is in the avatar of Shinjis? Is that Triple G? Do you follow boxing, Nenonoko? Nah, I have no idea. So I'm going to guess you're right. Okay. It's hard for me to say, but I think... Oh, what a run out for Francisco. My goodness. <laughs> on that turn, I'm like, it's going to be hard for him to win this one. And just rivers the stone cold nuts. I mean, look, you can't you can't feel bad for Chin Wei because he let him get there, right? Like he just kept checking. Mm -hmm. Here he's gonna snap call, of course, for that size. Very tiny bet by Francisco, a please call me kind of bet, or it's like it's a... I really don't have anything, so I have to bluff at this board and pretend that I have it, and then you get caught up by nature. Like, all right, fair play. But this time it was the nuts. It's yeah. pretty good. I, I like the sizing though because I think he thinks Chin Wei is actually playing tight, even you know. So he's trying to bet that small size to just get those crying calls. Because a lot of guys, they see it again. They made a straight there. They just bet big, and you might be mm -hmm. you might be watching and be like, "Well, he had he had the nuts. How can you play it wrong?" But you know, the, the sizing is definitely very important. It's what separates like these pros from other guys. And as of right now, I really like Francisco's position because it doesn't seem like he's deviated from his game. He has a game plan uh, for this final table. Other everyone else, they seem like they're they're playing a little tighter than normal, and he's trying to take advantage of that right now. 
the 4-3 is still the best hand here, as King-9 has mm -hmm. made no pair whatsoever. So there's a chance that Francisco wins another one. And with this spot, Nananoka suddenly he's got over 19 million chips. Not too long ago, he was all in with tens versus potentially Jackson Queens. He had 4 million chips. Wow. Things have uh, changed rather quickly. Yeah, Francis. This, the, Francisco, let us remind the people watching, dude's in for nine bullets. $90,000. It's, pay, it's paying off big time, man. He can get 11x here if he ships his tournament as well as a, some golden hardware, that bracelet, right? But, you know, there, I want to talk about a little bit what happened before this. Well, hold on. Die four off soon, ace 10. Sorry. I was getting a little carried away because I want to say there was a guy who's in for 12 bullets in this tournament. He did not cash. Okay. He did not cash. It happens. Tian Y actually flops best as he flops a pair of fives and he also has a four high flush draw. We know Shinjis has a 10 high flush draw. Tian Y decides to check so far. I feel like we've barely seen Shinjis play any hands, right? <laughs> He's just kind of chilling there, maintaining his 8 million chips that he almost got into the final yeah. table with and He's totally okay with how things are going by the looks of it. That's okay, man. Look, if I can maintain a 30 big blind stack and people are just flying away and I'm getting like 50k pay jumps in there, that that's what you want. You know what I mean? Um, Chin Wei is actually, what I've noticed, he's he's kind of tight, but in like, he plays his image because he knows he's playing tight. So he gets he goes for some moves like 5-4 offsuit here and raising ace 5 or an early position, but then he's like making some big folds in another spot. So um, someone we didn't know much about but we can see he's a very thinking player and uh, very uh, methodical on when to make his moves. No, he's playing well so far. He's been having a good time. Shinjis is like, hey, I've got a tough decision. I wouldn't yeah. hate a call, and he Ooh. makes the call, and he gets the best hand on the river. But it's also not the kind of flush that you want to go super bananas with, but you do like to see it. Yeah. I think you can value about this. A lot of guys just check because you're at the final table and like, what is Jack, Queen, King, and mm -hmm. Ace of Spades? But oftentimes, though, the Ten of Spades is just strong enough to go for some value, especially on a four straight, because sometimes they get crying calls from like an eight, nine type hand here and there, like some guy who turning their hand into a bluff. So it is worthy of a bet, but I wouldn't fault them for checking because we're at the final yeah. table of such a, a big prize pool. I'm okay with it because if you have a jack high flush there, you're not necessarily bet out very big. If you're a chin Y, you don't really want to value bet a 10 high flush and then get called by a jack high mm -hmm. flush. I think it's okay, especially because he's a satellite winner. Yeah. I no, gotta say, I, I, I like don't think uh, Eric wrong with checking. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, because the, the satellite winner to his right and then chin. But chin Y's been mixing it up, so it's hard to tell. Yeah. No, of course, Chin Wei is tricky, but then you have uh, Joachim Harodstadt and Thomas Mulacker, who are kind of short. So it's kind of nice for Eric Seidel to just sit there, and then the one big stack that he has on his right is not super aggressive. you got to be feeling this if you're Eric Seidel. Yeah, he's... Look, I watched like, a lot of the like final 30 or final 40 up to the, the final table pretty much, and Eric Seidel, near the end, he was very tight. Guy was sitting on 10 big blinds and like 15 big blinds, but he was making his he'll make calls down. He won't fold like fold a big like a reasonable hand. But then he wasn't playing a hand, he would just jam it in and he would just double up. And I don't know, man. This guy just cruises. I I feel like he's just gonna be guaranteed top two at the way he's playing right now. So you were watching uh, quite a bit. I mean, you were writing me very early, actually, on Sunday already, when there were still hundreds of people left when it was open registration, went all the way to the end. Why didn't you go live, Nanonoko? Why didn't you do my job? Do some uh, uh, railing to the <laughs> final table. Rail. Fire up the yeah, fire up the Nanonoko stream. What's happening? Yeah, it's been it's been a while since I've done that. That's a big, it was really fun to watch, really, because Adama was going crazy. But uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that because. Benita, uh, I don't know, forget his last name, but Francisco bet the flop, obviously raised a shitty hand in early position, excuse my language, mm -hmm. turned the flush draw. He's betting again. Third pot, knowing that king highs and ace highs will call, but have a tough spot with that stack size. Wow. Wow, takes it down. Thomas forced to let the ace four go. This Benitas, by the way. You are correct with his last name. I don't think you have to worry too much about your language because they used to also broadcast uh, Danny Anagrano versus Doc Polk heads up on this channel. And their language was a lot worse than ours, Nanonoko. So I think we're safe. 
All right, so Eric Seidel in this previous spot played very passively with two eights. King Jack suited though. I think he likes like the high card kind of suited hands better, so he's going to flat call here. Actually, not, not a great spot. Poor Thomas, man. It's not really going very well at this point. <laughs> it's on pace for one of those previous style finishes, right? The fifths, the sevenths, the eighths, and ninths. He's never performed better in fifth place, though, I believe. Well, that's a pretty mm -hmm. fun flop. Queen 10, 3, 2 hearts. Obviously, Francisco has the best hand at this point, but probably not in love with that board. Eric Seidel flops an open ender. That is actually a nice turn wow. for Mr. Harochstadt. Wow, so you see these snap checks around. I feel like you just got to go for it with this A7 of clubs. A lot of times they got like a 10. They can't really handle some heat, some pocket 9s, pocket 8s. Hey. I got a bet. I have a very irrelevant question after this hand. As Harrodstad leads sure. out with A7, Eric Seidel might call here, though. I mean, it's not even three big lines. He's holding. got 14 million chips. He calls. That is not a lovely river card for Harrodstad. I'm actually kind of curious to see what he does now. Yeah, oh, it's tricky. The queen is such a... It's not a good card because say, say Eric Seidel's got like an ace 10. He might feel pretty confident about his hand now, right? Whereas if it didn't roll off the queen, mm -hmm. he'd, he'd be much more worried. Uh, I don't know. I think I feel like he's got a check. If he's up against a draw, he beats those hands. Seidel, can Eric can Seidel fire? find a bet? No. Wow, that's... Uh... <laughs> Francisco's like, what the hell, guys? I actually folded the one reasonable <laughs> hand I have opened in the last hour. It would have been the best hand? Telling me Ace Jack was good yeah. here? Yes, it was, mate. Yeah, well, I, have, I think he got bailed out there while he came there. Uh, but what's your silly mm -hmm. question that you wanted to point out? So you told me that whenever you make the final table of an event like this, everyone gets a real name ID. So what would happen yep. if Elki would have made the final table of this event? You say his real name? Uh, oh my Roddy, God, by the way. Okay, never mind. Story. Never mind, Nananoko. Ignore me. We've got tens, we've got jacks, we've got fives. I don't know if they are relevant, but we also have aces again for Chin Y. Yeah, his timing is just perfect. Obviously, Jax is getting in. Ace is a smooth calling that shove, I'm guessing. Pocket fives actually has no outs. Both fives are folded already. <laughs> but yeah. these Jax, they just keep coming back at this final table. They haven't oh done very good. They've been making a couple sets, but only when they really <laughs> do not matter, when they were already drawing that. <laughs> what will the Aces do? Flat smooth call, call. indeed. Two the two tens, I think I can get this one out. The reason is Thomas Mulocker is up against a guy who cold called his jam. He's crushing his range, right, Chin Wei, just in general. I, I think I can fold these two tens. I've got a good stack too, right? You're sitting on mm -hmm. what, 35 bigs. I also, like, a call is not the worst thing in the world because you are closing the action. It is less than 10 big or a little over 10 big blinds. Wow. Oh he Thomas. would have flopped a set. I mean, the Jacks also flop a set, of course. So Thomas Mulocker is staying alive as long as he can avoid an ace. And he does. Uh, this hand would have been really funny if the tens would have called too. Oh, wow. yeah, what do you make of that, lose, uh, We'd lose Chin Wei Chin, I'll tell you that. But, wow, well, it's eights and queens now. But this, this is in a, a one queen, one eight. What is wrong with this final table? This is so action heavy, Roddy. It's Setup City. That's what it is. <laughs> we have entered Setup City tonight. Let's see how Shinji decides to play his queens. Probably steaming already that he just folded down. She's like, damn it, I would have flopped a set against Aces. <laughs> um, I think Seidel will fold. What? Did he just flat called the queens here in the big plane? I don't know about that, Roddy. Like, that's that's this is a master slow play or something. I don't know, man. They're, he's sitting on thirty five big blinds. I know he's under the gun, but six max and no one's sh that short. Twenty one. It just seems ex absurdly tight. It's going. Yep. It's going to well, raise. It might work out. Let's just sit back and I mean, see how the rest yeah. of the hand plays. He is going to raise on this flop. That's going to let uh, Eric Seidel knows that his hand is no good. I don't think Eric Seidel will get too out of line here. Yeah, it's, it's different, but 
I don't know. I don't know if it I did, hate it. I don't, it I did don't... make him. It did get him extra chips. I'll tell you that in this spot. Yeah. I think it's all right to do it once in a blue moon. So you're saying Elky? Because imagine his if real name is now Elky. <laughs> no, his real name is obviously not Elky. And Mr. Bertrand sure? Grospelier. So would he have been renamed to Bertrand Grospelier? That's my big question to you. Yeah, he would have. A hundred percent. Really? Yeah. Oh. This guy, Chin Wei Chien, I think his name was like David Chien or something like that, his screen name. And Joaquim, he was a different name too. Because uh, I was railing it. So And Shingis as well. Well, maybe not Joaquim, but Shingis for sure was a, a different user name and stuff like that so yeah, yeah. but Elky unless elky's Elky. name yeah unless elky's name is elky <laughs> uh, maybe when you reach the final table they change it to rotterdam you think that's also true like it's reversed well it's, it is already rotterdam so what are you talking about oh is it okay never mind never mind it i thought yeah what do you think I my name know, is I don't on gg your mate. streams really <laughs> i have no idea come on i sent you hand histories I don't really look at him, you know? I kind of just look at him briefly. And it's like, oh, God, no, i got to entertain this guy a little bit. <laughs> Eric Seidel wins another two million chip pot with Ace Jack versus Ace 10. Harald Stadt lets it go. I had a, uh, obviously, normally we have a little chitty chat in the beginning of a show about what we've been doing in poker for the last seven days. I had very fun. I had a very fun last seven days. I didn't play that much. Tournaments were a disaster for me. But I did have a great time playing five-card PLO with Anatoly Filatov, a previous winner of the High Roller Super Millions. And then I actually also played StarCraft 2 with him. Then Anoko, we played 2v2. <laughs> oh. oh, nice, nice. So is he actually decent or is he a piece of crap? He's very bad in StarCraft. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow, so Shingas opening 6-5 suited. Me locker. Think about making a play? No, he's out. I mean, Thomas is back to 24 big blinds. That is a lot more than he could have dreamed of when he saw he was going up against Aces. So, back in the mix. I would love to see Chen Wei Chen just ship this one. Um, he's sitting on 24 big blinds, but you can just kind of close the action out. I think at this point, they know Francisco opened some garbage hands already in early position. Flat calling this hand is just makes your hand like hell, and you let other guys in. You just gotta pray sometimes. I know you're sitting in fourth place, there's shorter guys out there, but close your eyes. Nice. I like it. Definitely uh, not a hater of this one. Takes it down, he's gonna be happy with it. Francisco will be like, well, whatever. What's one Bing Blight to a guy like me? It's chip leading with 19 million, so he's not too upset about it. Eric Seidel was forced to fold King Queen, I believe, in the previous hand, or it was King Jack. Let's see what he does with it this time. The trees may see a flop, but one of the trees is gonna be folded here by Thomas Mullocker. Yeah, one three. I haven't seen pocket fours make a set. Not if I in a while. I haven't seen eight five <laughs> either. What the hell is happening tonight, Nanoko? Where's my birthday? <laughs> I was like, oh man, we got to we got to point this stuff up. But Daniel, he's he was, Daniel was chat chitty chatty. We couldn't talk about that kind of stuff yet, but now he's gone, Roddy. We can unleash it all. <laughs> I think Daniel really loves talking about poker with a cheeky drink or two when it's like a very ser uh, relaxed setting. Like you can mix it up with like entertainment, memes, and then a bit of analysis too, and a bit of GTO chat and all that kind of stuff. I think that's Daniel's preferred environment. Yeah. For sure. All right, so the threes are good. Nice, nice check call too, right? Like, um, obviously not a great board for him, but uh, took it down twenty million. First player to make it past twenty million in this tournament. So we are down to six. Hey, Thomas Willocker, that's my birthday. <laughs> See, that's the thing. We're going to get some pocket four, some pocket fives. We're going to talk about a little side bet soon. Obviously, my guy went out quickly, as usual. That's what usually happens.
Well, Thomas has his work cut out for him as well, but anything is still possible. Gotta say, the blinds, it did feel like they went up quite quickly. Maybe we just played a bunch of hands rather soon, or... But it did feel that everyone well, also... went from pretty deep to... We're not that deep anymore. <laughs> right, but... I mean, the thing is, Francisco's got all the chips, so if you spread those out a bit, you'll see everyone with like 40 big blinds and stuff, and that's obviously a, yeah. quite a deep tournament. Francisco has over 60 big blinds, 70? Is it 70? He's going to grind them out, man. He's going <laughs> to... Everyone is, is giving him oh, the respect he does not deserve. I'll tell you that. Queen 7, I think it's in, yeah. 10-9 suited, probably going to just... Fold, yeah. Fives probably just gonna fold, I guess. Um, man, fives call. I, I've got a side bet with pocket fives, don't I? It, two fives are live. You're in a small blind. Guys raising every hand. How can you fold pocket fives? Come on, oh, <laughs> come. You just hurt me because we're gonna will. see a flop too. Oh. Yeah, it was going to be hard for Eric Sedel to win because obviously the 10-9 of diamonds was folded, pocket fives. These are kind of the cards that you're looking to connect with, with your 7-6. And all of them went out. A single diamond is not good. I love how Francisco opens queen seven and actually flops top pair as well. It's like, <laughs> he's going to give people the wrong idea at home, Nanonoko. Yeah, but he's playing great. Like He's he's playing the situation. He's grinding them out. If he, he's realized how many folds some all these other guys have done and it's not just one guy if one guy's doing all the folds well then that's everyone else is still playing normal right but everyone has done some tighter fold or some tighter plays so all he knows all he has to do yeah. what he's thinking is just lean on them just kind of keep raising fire some seed bets don't need a multi-barrel too much because they're just telling them where he's at uh, quite early it's really a, a lovely spot for him and plus there's a short stack out there 11 big blinds they're gonna make everyone else play tight too Let's see, Queen Jack suited. He might even. You think he just mucks this? I don't know. Does he play, Roddy? I think he might call, just flat call. Pray that nobody else does anything wild. Oh, wow. Okay, I like this. I like it. Mm -hmm. he's, he's kind Thomas of playing Miller like Chen Wei Chen. He's mm -hmm. playing like his image. You know, he knows he's like kind of been tight, kind of make a move here and there, and then just kind of. Maintain the stack. But he's kind of like increasing the stack now, right? Because he was sitting on 8 million for the longest time. Yeah. Well, that's a big move. Power play right there. Chips up to 11 million. Thomas Mulecker had ace nine of spades, but yeah, Shinji hasn't been three betting a whole lot. The your ace nine of spades only looks like a very, very tiny hand. Francisco is a maniac, man. I can understand that these guys are kind of afraid to raise his blinds as well because you know that he, he plays any two at this point. Yeah, this is um, Francisco dominance right now. A lot of people put money on him too. You can see 17693 yep. bucks, 109 people. Thomas has got 220 people, but you know, $20,000. So the average bet is bigger on Francisco. Just They just know he's such a strong guy. Mm -hmm. King they also know that he's got heart and commitment because he's in for nine bullets. I tell you, those Uruguayan people, man, they're they're the best. They're always crazy. I told you that, right? I, mean, I know. You've hyped them up and they have delivered just like the Brazilians have. We are going to see a flop here and it's a good flop for Eric Seidel. Not a whole lot to work with here for the man who lost a lot of chips with aces. I like to check here. I think with this hand, you don't ever really get called by worse, but you maybe blow up the pot to potentially lose a big one or get blown off of it eventually. King queen. Probably want to try to just check. Hope it's hope he's up against a similar hand. So down to six. And how much that is a short stack with eleven mm -hmm. big blinds. King queen will bet here. Eric Sadel will probably just call. Feels like anything else would be a bit out of line. What is a funny run out. This is Ace 8866. Ace 3 still yeah, the best hand. Weird bet. I almost feel like he just kind of gave him his opponent 1.5 big blinds. It's like, not too often your opponent just folds when they check this flop with this stack situation. Maybe. 
hope that Eric Sadel opened up with a queen jack or a jack 10 suited and completely missed yeah. and didn't want anything he just didn't... yeah something like that Thomas Mulocker is going to raise king jack earlier Thomas got a walk with 9-3 offsuit that has to feel like hitting the jackpot at a final table like this where you feel that normally you have to battle over every blind Ace nine, eleven big blinds. This guy's got to get desperate soon, right? He's the clear short stack. Six mm -hmm. people. He got two, two page jumps since the queen's fold. Is that right? Or the one? Yes. Camera. Two. Because Isaac Baron was still yeah. alive at that point. Right. Yeah, you're right. But still, <laughs> painful. This is a six of clubs as well for Chin White. Mealocker, he's not scared. He's still going to defend his queen six suited. 20 big blinds? He'll do it. He's Thomas Mealocker. He's got the best hand, but I don't know how he's going to win this one, Roddy. He's in trouble. Yeah. The fire. It's very, very hard to justify a call on this board. Thomas may and think that Francisco is full of it and just random absolute gar raising absolute garbage and he may just make the most out of line race here, but yeah, it'd be a bit of ICM suicide too. Yeah, it's it's it'd be just crazy. Um, he definitely yeah. knows Francisco's out of line, but sometimes just because you know someone's out, they can wake up with hands. We've seen Adamo hit some pocket aces and kings yeah. and queens. We've seen him have the five three suited. You know, <laughs> like they can hit something. Eventually, they will have it. Thomas will let go of his 4-5 here. And Harrochstadt, King 8 offsuit. Mm. I'm curious to see what he does. You know, he lays it down. Yeah, because normally King 8 there, probably not the best hand. But against Francisco's raising range, and they know he's raising garbage, it may not be so bad. But I think he's... Well, I'm not sure what Moonlocker is going to do. He's 6 here. If Thomas folds... Because then Harold Stott yeah. is going to jam, I think, and he's dead. But Thomas may very well save Harold Stott, unless he still wants to jam because he doesn't believe that Thomas Mulocker has anything. Possible. A little bit unlikely, but possible. Mm. We know this is ripping it in. It's so funny, right? Because Harold Stott is probably kind of annoyed that Thomas Mulocker opened there. And he's like, damn it, mm -hmm. I just wanted to jam. Why are you doing this? And he's like, okay, I'll wait. What he doesn't know is that he would have been snap called by Mr. Benitez with the Ace King. Yeah, it's funny how that works. I, I do the same thing too, where I'm like, oh man, why did you have to open? And then, like, you get, yeah. it looks like you got rewarded. Can, can we rewind for one second? Francisco, he he got in tens, or didn't he? He well, he should be out of this tournament. He had five million he had chips. Four million he chips, tens, mate. He's, <laughs> he's he sitting on twenty five million, million now. Gee, I mean, eight seven offsuit for twenty big blinds. Did you see that? Yeah. The man is absolutely steamrolling. This could be very bad news for Thomas Mulocker, who's also quite short, obviously at this point. He's got ace jack of clubs. Chin Wai has ace king offsuit. No jacks folded, at least, but. I don't know, man. Thomas doesn't strike me as a guy. Can you get away here, Nano? It's so annoying because he's sitting on 16 big blinds. And of course, the ace jack suited is in some flips with some hands. So like 10s, 9s, 8s, 7s, ace jack. Mm -hmm. He's up against ace queen, ace king, obviously. Some king queen suited. He, he makes, oh, the makes the call. Wow, at risk. Round two between these two. Last time he oh. got lucky. This time so far he takes the lead. Can Thomas Mulocker hold again? He needs to avoid kings, tens, and queens. And he will. Wow, that's the second time that Thomas Mulocker gets very lucky against Chin Y. Last time with jacks versus aces. This time ace jack versus ace king. Man, poor Chin Y. He hasn't done anything wrong and he just lost a monster stack. <laughs> He's got to be pissed, right? He's like, man, this dude... There's other guys, they're folding big <laughs> hands, and it's just like, man, I'd be so mad right now. You have no idea, Roddy. I'm like and, steaming for and him. They he's might my, get it all in. Asian brethren. Yeah, he will. They might go again. 
If Francisco just folds here and doesn't do anything silly, Ace Jack versus Queen Jack. Queen Jack can't fold because all of the chips are already in there. Can Thomas, Thomas Mulocker finish it off here and just do a little suck out or a big suck out actually one more time? This time Queen Jack against Ace Jack. A 10, Nanonoko? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it, man. I'm not cursing no one. This is brutal. Let's see. Uh, he's safe. No, he's safe. He is safe, but obviously still very short. Less than 10 big blinds. Less than 9 even. Wow. So people are just getting saved all over. Francisco got saved. Thomas now saved. Like, this is just a, some funny some funny hands happening. Um, I do think uh, Thomas and is one of Francisco's biggest competitors at this final table, the way it's playing out right now. Oh, I like Eric this. Eric had enough of Francisco. I love it. <laughs> Eric Seidel's been solving. He knows about the ace five suited as well. But you say it's mostly a big blind thing, though. Well, oh, bigger and small blind, but yeah. It's... Oh, <gasps> bucket fours. Always. You know it's possible. It's unlikely, but it's possible. Min race. Tiny call from Thomas. He watches the show yeah. for sure. And he's like, man, these nerds, they always talk about pocket fours. Well, Thomas, Thomas just rips it in. It's possible. He's just like, then he flops the set. That has been tight. <laughs> how do you play a set, Rowdy? You fold it. You fold a set. That's how you play it. Yes. Rabbit hunt. Production rabbit. <laughs> Eric Seidel could have. Maybe Thomas. No, I don't think he has the option actually there. Oh, wow. This could be fireworks. We've got Ace Queen offsuit versus a chip leader with King Queen suited. Can Chim Y find another double? A lot of aces are folded though, and no kings have been folded. Yeah, he's back. He's back in it. So he'd be up to five million if he can hold here. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about a flush, but the kings are very out there. Yeah, I was worried. Francisco, of course, right, doesn't Master have to sweater. go, but he probably will. Yeah. It's not about the spades. The spades are dead, Nenonoko. Don't worry about it. It's about the kings here, okay? All right. Show me. Uh, he's safe. So far, so good. I've never seen it. That's nope. not paint, so he is safe. <laughs> 5.3? Oh, almost 20 big blinds. That's not bad for a man who was just down to, I don't know, it felt like three and a little bit. He pretty much is back to where he was, and now he's going to ace jack into pocket kings here, Roddy. It's the same two guys. <laughs> Unless Shingus mixes Shinges. things up. Yeah. Safe. Yeah, I should save the ace jack play here, right? Against under the gun Unless open. Thomas. Yeah. Thomas Flats? We see no, fireworks. Thomas never right. flats, mate. That's literally disabled, okay? That is literally <laughs> disabled for Thomas Mulocker. He tries to click the call button, but it just won't let him. They're just like, no, yeah, that's yeah. not a play for you. <laughs> it's just frozen. Keeps on, he's like, oh, a race? He's like, okay, that works. <laughs> it's got a different client, mate. Oh, pocket force. Ace King. Eric Seidel. He doesn't know that pocket four is always making. They don't even tease you, Roddy. <laughs> they just, they just, they just always fold them, man. We're never gonna. You're gonna win one zero fifty two episodes <laughs> in season two. <laughs> I'll take it. All right. No, that'd Do be we have action here, Roddy? Yes. It is. Harochstadt is out. I am afraid for Joachim or Yasakim. Maybe it's Jessikim. Ye I don't know, but he needs he needs an eight and one's dead. Yep. Now King did get folded too, but obviously that doesn't matter too much if you're not the one who needs to hit. So far, Ace King is going strong. Can Harold shot maybe chop a seven or a three to chop an eight to win it all? Harold shot one time needs to Out. be yeah. Needs to be a three there, but it wasn't a three. And that means he is out. Francisco will get another one. He's back to 25 million, and we are down to five, Nanonoko. Yeah, he ended up getting sixth place. I mean, he did get a good score, 276k still. Um, I think he's going to be looking back at that. 
<laughs> pretty much his whole final table run, right? Because he's had some some funny spots for him. Uh, but uh, overall, it's just so it's just a weird and hand, man. I still can't get over it. The queens is obviously the, the big one for him, but let's be real, he would have lost the queens well. anyway to the tens. True. Second. I was gonna say also the eights was a quite a interesting hand for him too when he was up against the nine eight suited of Francisco, that added yeah threw in that yeah just some funny spots. Obviously the queens was the wrong fold, but I guess he would have broke even in that hand, right? So yeah, he would have, he would have, but then everything would have been different, right? The butterfly effect, because sure. then every card mm -hmm. would have been different. Class would have been out first. Nobody else would have ended up with class's chip, so would have been a completely yeah. different final table. Francisco's probably like. Got two million chips instead. <laughs> jack six. Now he's raising to jack six. But Thomas, he doesn't fold. He calls. Ooh, that's Outflops. a great flop for Thomas Mulocker as well. Yeah, very good. Does Francisco have the I want to win this hand syndrome, Nananoka? You raise this pre flop, you want to win on this flop. You're going to get called. He's going to. He roll off a jack, a queen, a king, or ace. We might feel, see another bet. Even a five. A deuce. There's a lot of cards that Francisco might just throw one more bet out. Because he knows Thomas Mulocker will... Well, I mean, the three just really seals the deal, I think. I don't think Francisco fires again. Um, but I was going to say, Thomas would check call ace highs and king highs on this board for sure. And obviously mm -hmm. pairs. Check, check real quick. Queen on the river. Do you think Thomas hates to see that card or do you think he doesn't care too much? I mean, he, no one likes it when you see an over card. But I don't think he's looking to fold. Um, he's just trying to think if he can get some value himself. He can represent some draws. It is kind of weird if he bet out on the queen, so he could get looked up by ace high, some pocket pairs here and there. So it's not unreasonable for him to start betting on a card that doesn't really look like he should be betting on. Because he can rep the 5-6, the 5-7, the these types of hands. But he's going to check. And it goes check, check, which means Thomas wins a pot of almost 4 million chips over 10 big blinds heading his way. He is completely back in the mix after things looked very dire for him a while ago when he got it all in with Jax. But to be fair, if anyone deserved to get lucky ones at a final table of high roller super millions, kind of had to be Thomas Mulocker though, right? This dude has been getting proper unlucky some of the previous episodes. As of right now, his best finish in the super millions is the fifth place. So he's tied for that right now. But yes, this is more money, but uh, mm -hmm. this is your birthday. Was just... He's telling Chin Wei Chin, this is my birthday. This is Robbie's birthday. <laughs> I'm glad you like that so much. I was just thinking of that, though, that right now, the next payout is basically like winning a regular edition of the High Roller Super Millions. It's often around 325, 330, sometimes 355. So all of these guys, they technically just won one. Uh, they're just free rolling. Yeah, you're right on that. Ace three offsuit. Um. Yeah, I'm just gonna go um because this is like for satellite guy. It's not the best spot here. The guy sitting on eleven big blinds and you know to his right or left. I can't do my left and right, but ace three. I don't know. It's well, my standards. It's very call, hard to call. Yeah. yeah. I think three calling is Some annoying. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I was thinking of that too. Yeah, just because Francisco opens garbage all the time, but it's so scary, of course, because you really don't want to get snap called by a bad race or go up against a big pair. But I don't hate it because it's unlikely that you flop good, right, with ace three. And Francisco, he's going to yeah. bet every board. You already know that. So I think that's uh, honestly an awesome move there by our satellite winner. Yeah, it's just a big play to make because you're like, man, Chin Wei Chin's so short. But yeah. he, he was thinking, you know what? He just really raises any two cards in this spot. And the mathematics say I've got to make this move. So, um, yeah, good play. I like it a lot. Chin Wei is going to jam the King Jack suited, which reminds me, did you see that weird tweet that Tony G made a couple of days ago? Do you follow Tony G on Twitter? I do but i did not read it but he was what's he talking he's talking about fasting or something or 
I, I yeah, what he's it talking was. about water fasting and then how easy it is to just fart of only consuming water. And then Lex Malta has actually replied. He's like, man, this morning I really woke up with the idea. I want to know if Tony G is still able to fart properly or not. I'm so glad that you're sharing this with the rest of the world. I was kind of chuckling at that. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's been water fasting forever because I f I'm pretty sure I read him doing that like months ago. So it's, it's been half a year of fasting or something, or is he taking a break in between? No. I think right now he's on five or six days of only water. I don't know if he's still going strong yeah. enough. I just thought it was a funny reply uh, response yeah. by Lex. <laughs> Lex is just hilarious. Obviously, great streamer too, but just he's got some funny stuff. Francisco makes the call with mid pair. That is a very funny turn. Another hard rolls off, another queen rolls off. Eric Seidel has not been very out of line yet tonight. He's got king eight. What a run out. Mm. It's kind Terrible of funny. card for Francisco, right? Because the hearts, the ace, just everything got there. Snap check. They didn't even think about bluffing at it. I think Seidel right now, he's in a one and done mode. Yeah. That's lovely for Francisco because he probably thought he was never going to win. Can blame him. Yeah, I for sure. Just like really rarely you win, but he did get it. <laughs> Ace three. Thomas can open this, and he will. Jack Dews and Jack Dews in the small blind and big blind. That's an easy one for Mister Mulaker. I say I really have been quite impressed by Satu Bayev, even though he hasn't done a whole lot. The few times he makes a move. I feel like he makes it with conviction. He knows what he wants, gets the job done. Don't think he's playing bad at all. No, I don't think he's playing bad. I think he's a very situational. Like, doesn't play many hands. But thing is, when a guy doesn't play as many hands, when they make a move, it like works like at a very high frequency. And that's kind of mm -hmm. like what those two guys on top are doing. The, the satellite winners. They're not like letting them get walked. Through. They're not getting run over, right? They they kind of they fold oh. a little bit more to blinds, but then they make moves. I mean, I don't think anyone in the world can criticize the way that Chin Wai has been playing. He actually got it in good, like time and time again. He just got really unlucky. The poker gods just Great. like Thomas Mulocker a little bit more than they like Chin Wai tonight. Yeah. Well, he's not out. Um, King Jack City yeah. can get some blinds here. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, what do we got for Roddy Betts? We got Thomas Mulocker and Eric Seidel, correct? That is correct. Yeah, I definitely didn't put any money on the chip leader and didn't put any money on Chin Wai and Satu Bayev either. So it's Thomas and Eric. If they combine their stacks, we can fight. <laughs> right now, though, they're out of position against them. Not a spot you want to be in. Eric Seidel with the worst seat, I would say, of the of everyone here. I mean, if we would lose the two satellite guys at the top, then... It's just a three-way setup. Well, right? then it doesn't matter where you sit, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's what I mean. Because you're like, oh, he has the worst seat. I'm like, well, if we lose those two guys, it doesn't matter that much. But especially Satu Bayev still has almost 9 million, so I don't think he's going to go anywhere. Thomas, I he always has a tough final table, I tell you, man. He never gets one of those smooth sailing tournaments. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've never seen Thomas just have like some guy open under the gun, someone three bet, someone shove, and he's got aces. Like that does not exist in the world of Thomas Mulocker. Only marginal <laughs> spots. He's the middle guy shoving and losing with like sevens or eights or something like that. But he must run good sometimes because he keeps making it to the final table. I mean, technically he ran good tonight because he got lucky that he's still here. I mean, wow. you know, he... <laughs> what is this? Nana Noka, yeah. talk to me about this. <laughs> this is just trying to bully those guys, man. He's bullying the guys because when you're sitting on a 23, 24 big blind stack, you're still open hands, even though they're stronger range, but they have to fold. So, king queens, king jacks, ace jacks, uh, eight, seven, sixes. Like, are they really reshipping? But Shingus is he's suspicious for some reason. And he rightfully I think it's so. personal. Oh, man. I think and it's personal. Oh my god! What a well move. done. That, that is sick, mate. That is sick. Well done, Shinjus. I honestly think that he knows that Francisco is probably tilted that he jammed the ace three on his open, you know, because that's kind of annoying when people start jamming on you. Mm. And he's like, man, I know that you're 
trying to get one back on the board against me. I know that you've been opening garbage. You know that I know that you think I can't do anything about this. That is a crazy move, but I love it. That is, yeah, because he's sitting on 23 big blinds, and, you know, he's still got the fold there. And, like, yeah, no, Shing is definitely on point. Um, like I said, like, he's he's really, he's he's honed in. He's not crazy. Mm -hmm. He's smart. That's the difference. Oh, what a move. What a move. <laughs> That's sick. Because, like, these pay jumps are so big as well. This is not at level one of the tournament where you're trying to make it personal with someone you're battling out. No, we're at the final table. There is a WSOP bracelet on the line. This man is in the zone. This has got ace, deuce of clubs here. Yeah, we're on a 103k pay jump for this one. <laughs> big. Imagine it's you get snap called by ace king there. Like, <laughs> you feel real silly. Uh, sick move. We are getting ready for our second break. I think one more hand. Nope, no more hands. If my clock reading skills are correctly, they are not. One more hand. <laughs> Pocket oh, force, baby. One more set. Oh. He's he might rip it in. You might get. He might rip five yep. cards. <laughs> five cards for Roddy. <laughs> We're gonna see some some fireworks. Queen, will not call. Thomas Milocker, will he make the call? This would be like round four between these two. Thomas is like, I've done you dirty a couple of times. We are going to get all five cards, but pocket four is always make a set. But they're going to need to make a set. If he wants to win it, Ooh. that was awfully close. Thomas needs to avoid the four of hearts and the four of clubs to win a monster pot. And he does, as that is paint. The pocket four is no good for Chin Wei. I feel kind of sad for him, Nananoka. That man deserved a bit better tonight. He really got unlucky in the all-in scenarios, but... That's poker. He still does walk away with $355,000 in case you feel really bad for him. That should help to ease the pain a little bit. Nano and I will get ready for our second break. If you guys are enjoying this coverage of the final table, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. A lot of very cool shows happen on this channel. We are here every Tuesday, and we think our show is very cool. We'll see you guys in four minutes. On Sunday, it is the 1K GG Masters, the $2 million guarantee, and it's a freeze out again, yes? Oh, it's great, Jeff. You can only go broke one time. Hey, and you can play a satellite to get in the mix. Play a satellite, which I know you need. That 1K buy-in, not within the Brent Hanks bankroll. This is a two-day event. Again, it is a freeze out, and it does resume on Monday after level 32 or when we have reached the final tape. Hello everybody, Daniel Grano here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations, you know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's going to fold back, right? It's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flopped the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry. You don't even have to lift a finger. First, Simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop out window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. 
That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my God. Michael Otamo is the best. Welcome back everyone to hour three of the High Roller Super Millions final table, the bracelet edition, almost $1 million on top. Four players left, Nenonoko. Eric Seidel is still in the mix. He's hanging in there. Anything is still possible for bracelet number nine? Yep. Um, <laughs> definitely possible. He's just hanging in there. He just cruises, man. But like eventually it's going to be heads up. And then, you know, but Thomas has made, has clawed wow. his way back in. Wow, Deuce 4 really going for it, but obviously Thomas not folding. But these two guys right now, the big stacks, both could have been out. Both in dire shape when they got all in, too. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm surprised that Thomas only had 16 million. I know just before the break, he won another one. That is a lovely turn card for Thomas Mulocker in case he was worried about an ace. A bit less worried about an ace now. Should probably make him feel good, but man, if he wins this one, he's closing in on 18 million. Nananoko, he should have been out not once but twice. Yeah, I mean, the guy of all the chips, they, they're the ones that were all in all the time, right? The other two guys haven't been all in at risk at this final table yet, yep. I believe. I mean, right, so Satubayev did make yeah. that crazy move with ace-3 and also the king-queen, of course, twice, but he did not get looked up. Thomas will take this one yeah. down. It's another big one. I love the king-queen play. I thought that was amazing, especially the stacks yeah. death they were playing. And especially because he was going up against queen-6, right? It's not like he got another <laughs> decent hand to fold or a pair. Like, no, it was just out of line by Francisco. And Satubayev picked up on it. It's a fun little dynamic between those two. It's not a totally fair fight, as Francisco still has way more chips. Somehow flops best here with 7-4. Yeah, blinds are up, though. So even though Francisco's got a nice chip lead, you know, like, he loses one decent pot. Like, because all these guys got 10 million minimum. You know, he's, he'd be in dire mm -hmm. shape himself. And I think he knows it. He tried to run away with it. At one point, he was closing in at, like, 26, 27 million, I believe. But... You lose a couple. And now it's uh, perhaps an opportunity for Thomas Mulocker to become the new captain at this table. Be kind of insane to see Thomas Mulocker finally win his first edition. And obviously the biggest one that he's been at a final day with. A bracelet on the line. And also the one time where he didn't get it in good. I feel like in the past he always got it in good. And he got unlucky. This time he got it in bad, not once, but twice. He was able to get there. So he makes the call here. He's got the best hand. I wonder if he check calls the king high on his board. It's usually the best hand. It's just, you know, you're looking at your little kicker there and you're like, hmm. 
Quarter pot, though. That's really hard to fold to that. Thomas knows it. Yeah. If you use big blinds, it now says like 1.3, and you're like, oh. Hmm. I'm surprised he folded for a quarter pot. I think yeah. he gives. He, I guess he doesn't think Shingus is going out of line pre flop. It's also King Four. Like, what are you hoping for on the turn? There aren't too many good cards for you there. After. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what Francisco does with his King Nine. I think 25 minutes ago he would have three bet this for sure. This time he decides to just go and he does flop top pair. Two pair? Top two pair. Uh... I would not hate a check here because Eric Seidel a few times has checked the flop and then bet the turn. So if he would mm -hmm. have checked here again, there is a chance that maybe Eric Seidel does take a step at it. Yeah, also when you're holding the top two pairs, it's kind of like, well, what can your opponent have? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, well. Works out for Francisco in a small way as he does win a little pot. We've got ace three of diamonds against ace deuce offset here. Wonder if Satubayev wants to see a flop or if he decides to three bet. We know that he's willing to fight back against Francisco. Does he fight back against Thomas? Let's see. So Thomas here, he's got bottom pair, king high board. That's quarter. These quarter pot, man. That's all you need to do to get it done. Yeah. Hard to do anything there, I think, with Ace Deuce. So the man with what I believe is a triple G avatar lets it go. And he's got pocket force. <laughs> he won't see it. There's no way, Roddy. You're just I know. getting teased over and over again. I actually had a fun moment with Pocket Force last week. I was playing one of those speed races. Didn't have a lot of time. Had a long day of StarCraft. I was like, all right, fire up one speed racer. Oh, like three way all in. Pocket all the bounties. He makes the call. Eric Seidel does have King 10. He closes the action. He no! Oh, Pocket Force always he make a cut. set. <laughs> Two for oh, Ronnie, zero for Nanonoko. Ship it. This is ridiculous because everyone folds. He's he folded the spot similar. Small blind. He folded the pocket pair, and this time he calls. And it's all right. Memes aside, he's got a set. What does he do now? I'm so salty though right now. You have no idea. He already had a set pre-flop, Nanaka. Why are you making it seem like he got a set now? He already had a set. Uh... Apparently, pocket fours always makes a set. Uh, Not a bad turn card, by the way, for Eric Seidel. Let's focus on what actually matters, and that is that Eric Seidel yeah, now has bet. the top end. Yeah, it is a big bet. Yeah, it's a huge That's bet. A I think it's a little bit greedy. I don't know if greedy is the right word. It's more like he's a worried. He's just like, I know someone's got a 10 out there. I know someone's got a 6. or a I just like trying to dodge it because it's two guys. Mm -hmm. If it's one guy, he probably wouldn't have his bet as big. So was Murakka probably trying to figure out, like, what do you have, mate? What do you have that you call off with in the small blind and then bet big on the turn? And then Thomas Murakka thinks of the high roller super millions. He's like, he's got pocket force, doesn't he? You know, it's really funny. When I play on GG, there are quite some guys that I play with that actually watch the show. And then they're like, whenever there's a four on the board, they're like, you've got pocket force, Roddy. <laughs> and then I just reply with a winky face. Or <laughs> Even though, obviously, 99% of the time I don't, but it's kind of fun. It's a real thing. Yeah, you've you've created a flop a, for Eric Seidel here. Let's go for a little checky. Deuce nine might. Yeah, Thomas maybe wants to bully Eric Seidel. Wouldn't work. Eric Seidel still has the best hand at this point. We'd love to see Eric bet. Sees a check on the flop. You're open ended. You got a lot of outs and. Quite frankly, you're going to get a lot of hands to fold there better. When he fires, though, he's only, he's got sticky keys. I'll tell you that. What is he going to do when he has to bet over a million, though? Is it always going to be one, 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 or two, 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 two? Because... <laughs> oh, my God. Another set. He's... 
Another set. We know Francisco ain't folding. Pocket force. Can Ronnie just close out the side bet right here, right now, with back to back sets? <laughs> <laughs> wow. He really, I mean, yeah, he's going to see. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> this episode is force. sick. Always make a set. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This pisses me off, Rod. I'm just, I'm so salty. You have no idea. Mm. For all the new viewers Ooh. who have no idea what we're on about, at the beginning of season two, Nananoka and I made a side bet. $500 it was, right? Of what makes more sets, pocket fours or pocket fives. 250 for that one, but yes. Uh, uh, 500 for picking the winners. Yeah, that's right. But you look, he's playing it like a set. Well, that's because he has a set. The backstory is Roddy, before I met him, always said that pocket fours always makes a set. And they did for a bit. And then they never did again. The season two, <laughs> he put his money where his mouth is. And right now he's crushing 3 0 to my pocket fives. <laughs> now, Noka probably could have had four or five sets by now. And actually, situations where the fives could have played, but people often folded them. There were some moments where it really would not have been out of line to see a flop with the fives, but. No, no, got his sets when it didn't count, but he gets his sets when it does. Francisco was hoping that Satubayev had a real hand there. Satubayev, unfortunately, did not. Wow, that's insane, man. Oh, I'm all warm right now. Two out of three hands, back-to-back -back sets. Let's go. <laughs> what a great episode, huh? You're just loving it. That just sealed the deal for you. Um, yeah. I was a little surprised Francisco went for a check raise there, though, with that said. It was such a dry board. Yeah. I think it's because it was personal between those two, and he's like, I'm making another move on you, mate. Punish me now. Mm. Yeah, I, I can kind of see that for sure. Eric Seidel does win a pot of two million chips. It may not seem like a whole lot, but for Eric Seidel, that's like a 20% increase of his stack. So it's a pretty big deal. I'm not worried for Eric Seidel. I think, what the? Did he just flat call King Six off soon a small blind? He really That's thinks, well, I mean, for, to be fair, Francisco is pretty crazy. He's actually flopped. Do you, do you think really he good. actually did this on purpose or is it a misclick, Rowdy? I wonder. I actually don't know. That could be a misclick. I don't really think of misclicks very often, but this is so out of character for Eric Seidel. Mm -hmm. And it's a small blind. Which is the weirdest position, but he's flop best. He's actually yeah. made chips. I want this to show down. Francisco's gonna be like, Are you kidding me? The GOAT doesn't play that many hands. And when he does, he's got King Six Offs or Aces. <laughs> Eric Sadell is wondering what he should do. He decides to check it. Francisco checks back on the river. And this is where you could very well throw out a WTF uh, Danny on the Grano face or an Elky face. All right, then Bilzerian. Pocket jacks this time for Eric Seidel. Yeah, now he's got jacks. I, I really have no idea, Rowdy. I'm leaning towards misclick, but so we'll move on from it. King Seven's going to play, I believe. Or he's going to do one of those pissed off three bets. No. Nope. King High might mm -hmm. be good, though. He's got backdoor diamonds. I don't think the mindset Check. is of oh, Francisco. Oh. He does drill the king on the turn. That's lovely for him. Very unfortunate for Eric Seidel. Can we do? Can you do me a favor, though, Roddy? Can you tell Eric Seidel mm -hmm. he still has ten minutes and thirty-seven seconds of time bank because he is playing so fast? I said that in the beginning of the show already a few times when he decided to bet or check, and one time where he went for a little bluff, I think too. He plays real fast, especially that's funny, right? Because you think older generation player obviously mostly plays live, plays a little bit less on the internet. Mm -hmm. You expect that Eric Sadell, if anything, to only have one minute left right now. We'd be like, oh, no, you got to worry. But Eric Sadell, man, yeah. he, he knows what he wants. He, he plays faster than all of the guys who play on the internet regularly. I think this will be Ray's call or Ray's jam. Actually, I believe Shingis would jam. was playing 20. He's, yeah. yeah, he's going to get in. I wonder, though, Ace Jack. Okay. Is there one he call. didn't think about it? It's fast. Right. That is a fast call. Seems like we're not going to get any brutal runouts here. Nobody can make a flush. So we are safe. And we're just going to chop this one up. That was a fast call, by the yeah. way, for 10 million chips. 
It's a lot of chips. It's it's not. It's like twenty seven big blinds. You know, it's like it's not something to snooze at. We're like 25, 20, 25, 26 big blinds. It's a lot. <coughs> Ooh, Eric Sadell makes the call with 10 deuce of diamonds on the big blind. Flops mid pair. Trying to give Doyle Brunson some love, his other old school brethren, but like he's in trouble. Half pot from Moonlocker. It's a little bigger bet. Usually betting quarter pot. Makes the call. Thomas might be worried that he's going up against a weak ace here. Yeah, a lot of times he actually is. Um, mm -hmm. I think the Queens usually takes a free card here. Don't want to get blown off your hand. Clearly got outs to a nut straight. So I like to oh. check. Oh, and a 10. Because uh, I'm like, that's a blank, right? Because how can a deuce improve anyone if no one's got spades? Deuce is playing 10 deuce. Eric <laughs> Seidel is the man. <laughs> That is a big one, man. He bets three million quite quickly too. Thomas Mulocker still has queens here. Does not have a spade in his hand. Yeah. He's like, man, I Mulocker's know you don't have like, king well, queen. Yeah, I know you don't got king queen. I know you don't got queen nine, but you know, they can have the other hands. Flushes, two pairs. That's nice. sick. What a what a random river. <laughs> yeah. As we have uh, two relatively weak hands here, I'll keep a close eye on the action. I have a question for you, Nano. I had in my stream title yeah. today when I played some StarCraft. I'm like, oh, we'll do the show with Dan in the ground. And people are like, oh, wow, is he like really famous in poker? I was like, yeah, yeah, Dan is a really big deal. Then we had a little chat about if you would have to talk about maybe the three. Wow, King 4, by the way, just flopped trip <laughs> fours here against Ace 5 of Thomas Mulocker. If you have to name the three most well known poker players of all time, which three names? Mm -hmm. Would you provide? Um, or you want to hear my list Dan first? No, I'll go first, I think. Dan, Daniel Negreanu, yeah. Phil yeah. Ivey, mm -hmm. and Dan Bilzerian. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, had the first I think two. Dan Bilzerian is, 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 the, is, uh, is up there for sure with the like random people. Yeah, I think I'm right. Okay. You go for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did not pick Dan Bilzerian, I'll be honest. <laughs> I think Dan Bilzerian is incredibly well known. And I'm not talking about like who has more reach or anything. I'm just talking about the three poker plays, you know, that people might know. I had the first two and then I had Phil Helmuth. But some people were like, oh, Doyle Bronson. I was like, yeah, could be. you could make an argument for that. But I think Phil Ivey, Danny Anagranu, Phil Helmuth, I think that's a very solid top three, right? Yeah, when it comes if, to... I, if I didn't pick Dan Bilzerian, I think you're right. Phil Helmuth would be... The next one. I think Phil Helmuth is more known than Doyle Brunson. Doyle Brunson is more for people who are pretty hardcore. Well, not hardcore yes, fans, but like pretty strong fans of the game. Mm -hmm. um, but people who have seen this Phil Helmuth just be ridiculous. It's rants, laughing at him. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> we'll always laugh at Everyone's laugh at him. That's the funny thing. He's a meme. <laughs> but he's a very good meme. And he's crushing the heads up battles that he's currently been uh, taking on over the last few months. We've got Eric Sadow opening things up here with ace and nine. Thomas Mulocker, three bats quite bigly with king queen offsuit. I like it. Thomas has actually been quite a little quiet too in terms of three betting, so it should look strong. Sadow's out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who's the fourth? Does fourth you pick Doyle Brunson or you pick someone else? I didn't really think about it. I only thought about my top three. Uh, three was like, pretty easy. I feel easy, like there's a lot of. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Four. hard. Yeah, there were like know. some people. There's were no like, one else. Oh, the uni. Oof. I... Tom Dwan is a bit too for too much for the diehards, right? Uh, Gus Hansen, actually. Gus yeah. Hansen, I think, is a good one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, don't agree. I don't know. I feel like every like I'm just thinking of randoms, right? And everyone know, like if you think poker, Negreanu, Ivy, and Dam is I think it's perfect. It's those are the three, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of people out there actually that don't know Dan Bilzerian plays poker. I'll put mm. I'll put it like that. True. Because if you think Dan Bilzerian, you think of machine guns, big trucks, cruise ships, and chicks. Yeah, but there's a like I've 
people messaging me about Dan Bilzerian. I've never had like my family messaging me about Dan Bilzerian, and no one's ever messaged me about Phil Ivey or Daniel Negron, even <laughs> myself, you know. But you know, Dan Bilzerian, he just shows up, man. I don't know how he, it's it's just funny, but yeah. Thomas wins a pot of five big blinds here with ace high. That's obviously, these are the little pots that do matter a lot, right? Like where you go check, check on the river and you're like, I hope I win this. I hope I win this. It feels so good. And there is two million extra chips heading to Thomas's way. So just when he had a little downswing where he went from 17 or 18 million back to 12, he's now back up to uh, 16. But he's going to have a hard time winning this hand. Yeah, this is a... Uh... A good board for both guys, though, in the limp pot. I'll tell you that. Both are pretty deep, though, so they wouldn't be looking to get multiple barrels in. What does Thomas Mulocker do with Queen 3 offsuit? Wow. Actually, fires a little over two big blinds, almost one million chips. I think Francisco can just yeah. call. I don't think he really needs to do anything else. And he doesn't. Yeah. The run is clean for him. Probably check check on the river. I think yeah, Thomas thinks he's 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 done with the hand. I think the reason he bet the turn, because I thought it was a little unusual, was well, you know, the the straight kind of outs came in there, like to say like he's got Jack Six as opponent or something like that, King X. And, like he didn't want those hands to get kind of freebie. He might have the best hand. Blinds go up to a very easy blind level when it comes to calculating the big blinds. So now Nananoko can do math again. I think it's funny, by the way, is how long Daniel Negrano has known you, but he still says your nickname in such a funny way. Oh, I was going to say that to you because this guy has never learned how to say my screen name for the longest time. And, you know, I've played mini games of him, high stakes games, and, you know, like... Even I even have his phone number, I think. So I'm like, my God, this guy can... He, like, and it's different every time, Roddy. That's the thing. It's yeah, not like... Yeah, I know. Nano, it's, like, nan, it's, it's Nanoko last time. Today, I don't even know what he said. It was so it's gibberish. I just had to hold, keep a straight face. And now I'm starting to think, does he even know he's talking to the same guy? I wasn't even sure anymore. It was just... It was ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, this could actually become an interesting hand here. As Thomas Mulocker needs some help, and he's got a uh, pretty decent hand wow. here. That's a big bet, and King Jack can't do much. Well done by Thomas, because that's a big pot, man. Four million chips. Yeah, that's so funny. I also noticed that he keeps changing it. Like, he never says it correctly, but he keeps going <laughs> for a different way. It's amazing. <laughs> No, it's not. It's literally everywhere. Because I've seen him a lot of times in you know, poker events and stuff. And he doesn't know my real name, I don't think, either, right? So he just calls me by <laughs> no, no, like every possible iteration of no, 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 and Coco, like just a cow. I don't know. He's making new names up. It's like <laughs> the most ridiculous thing ever, Roddy. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I was even talking about the big game, and that is the show that I watched a lot way before. Well, I played a little bit back then, but I thought that was an amazing show. As the queen rolls off here on the river, so to buy, I've had a pretty big draw and already had a pair. But yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, you guys go so far back. How does he not know? And I do think when you go back and you watch the big show, that was kind of like, I don't want to say like your, your breakthrough, right? Because obviously you play a lot online, but that was one of the very first times that you played in one of those kinds of games. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that was my biggest cash game I've ever played. I lost I lost like 100K or whatever, but like, because I, I, yeah, I never played live really. And um, uh -oh. yeah, I got, I got kind of messed up. Oh, worry, don't worry about that. Ace, queen suited. No, I don't think Seidel will be. Normally, Seidel. Because gone. of Francisco. Francisco, Francisco saves him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> agree. Eric Seidel dodging a bullet here. He may not know it, but well, maybe he knows it now because of the immediate jam there. That man lost his damn Bilzerian any modes. Yeah, I remember at the show back. Ooh, we have got a couple of decent hands here too. Everyone has got like something, but Francisco has the best hand. They were making fun of you. They're like, oh, Nanonoko is bored. He doesn't have enough tables. That kind of felt to me like that's like when I go to my family, you know, and they're teasing me. He's like, oh, he's away from the computer. They were kind of picking on you. They're like, oh, he doesn't have enough tables to play. He's so bored. We're playing too slow. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I do. I don't normally play too much um, high stakes like that kind of cash game because I I mostly I play twenty four tables. I'd played if I could had a choice, I would play ten tables of twenty five fifty rather than playing one game of two hundred, four hundred, eight hundred, whatever the hell we were playing uh, at that stakes. Just because I like to re- have the long run reach faster, more hands, etc. But enough interview about me, Roddy. But you know what I was reading? It's not an interview. Chat. It's a walk down memory lane. Let's well, yeah, let's talk about Ace Queen versus Queen Ten then. I did want to say one thing though. Someone mentioned Johnny Chan or Chris Moneymaker. What do you think about that one? Yeah, I think decent. You can make a very solid, decent, right? You can make a very solid argument for them, but I don't know if I would ever put them above Phil Ivy or Danny Onagrano or Phil Helmut. No, I'm not putting them at them. Yeah, but the fourth yeah. guy though seems solid. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the spot. Sorry. Uh, Francisco bet the turn, got called by the Queen 10. We know the Queen 10 needs to go for it, right? Um, hmm. Gives one hell of a steal, man. He can make a bluff here. How much does he need to bet to take this one away? Oh, like two. Uh, he needs to think is he targeting the ace high draw or is he targeting like a 9x type hand? I don't think he thinks he's up against the jack too often because of the sizing and the flop action. I'd go like two point two point something million. I don't know. But the thing is, he's thinking, well, I checked the flop. Can I really represent a jack that way? It's hard, right? Because a lot of people bet a jack on a mm-hmm. flop. He's staying <laughs> tiny. Yeah. So this is to bluff off the king queens. A one diamond. Yes. Yeah. Wow, nice call from Francisco. It is a very nice call, but I think he took a very, very long time to bet two big blinds. I, I feel like at that point, it doesn't become very believable anymore. Like, who the hell ever sits in the tank for almost a minute and a half to then bet two big blinds on the river? Yeah, so, and I think that's maybe that's why Francisco calls because he was thinking through the hand while his opponent was thinking. And when he saw the tiny mm-hmm. bet, it kind of looked like a, what it was, was to move his opponent off of the same kind of, like a, a high card type hand that was drawing. It's really just, that's an amazing call, though. Um, I kind of agree with what you're saying, though, for sure. Um, he took a little bit, he, he acted 30 seconds faster, but maybe he didn't know what size in the pick. <laughs> well, he does make trip fours here. It is also the second time in not too many hands we saw somebody make trip fours with a very random offsuit four. It's going to be hard for him to get a whole lot of <laughs> chips out of Francisco this hand, but maybe Francisco feels like he's got a soul read on his opponent now and becomes a hero with King 10. Francisco, uh, I was going to say he probably would check call a turn bet. But now it's just getting pricey. He might he might still do it, just think he, he's up against a draw. He does. But he did mm-hmm. not want to see that five. I'll tell you that because he was trying to pick off the five six, the five eights. I think he's, yeah, he's all he's in. Done. Machingus is going to go for yeah. it. He thinks his opponent has an ace. Yeah. I think he's going to wait like twelve seconds and then he will go all in. You should do one the one thirty-two minute, left two on the clock. Lines. Yeah. But Francisco will snap fold. No king ten is no good here. At least he got a little extra there of a very random hand. Still anybody's game, is it? Like, even if Satubayev and Eric Seidel are a bit shorter, they get one double through Francisco. They've got twice the amount of chips of Francisco, pretty much. So I feel like totally any of the agree. four could still win it. And he, we've been playing for wow. like 15 minutes, and the stack size is the exact same situation here. Like 23, mm-hmm. 15, 10, 10. What a flop, by the way, for Thomas Mulocker. <laughs> um, Rowdy, Seidel has used five seconds since last time I told you about the time bank. <laughs> yeah, He's got 10 minutes Eric and Seidel. seconds. <laughs> Turns out the most old school player plays the quickest of them all. Let's see what Satubayev <laughs> does here with King Queen offset. Yeah. It's going to open up. It's been, it's been a. A very tense final table, I feel. Yeah. A lot of like crucial no, moments. Because the pay like, jumps are I, so I big. Tense. And 
Yeah, yeah, no, I had the exact same. I was watching it a bit before and it was a bit quiet as we have Kings here from Mr. Seidel. But it's like, it feels like it's kind of a, a bigger Tuesday, obviously, than it normally is. There's a bracelet on the line. The guys are really battling and it's hard to predict. Like, it's not like one guy's got 40 million and the other three are fighting over a pay jump and we know he's going to win it. it. It feels tense. Yeah. And like, I. Like earlier, you know, when someone busts out in ninth and eighth, and you're like, okay, you know, someone's got to go. But now, I think I'm going to feel the pain with these guys, you know? Uh, four remaining, such a close yeah. race. Eric Seidel gets kings and, you know, picks up some chips. This could be a raise jam. Pain. Probably have to... F I feel like you got to fold this king queen. I don't know. It's yeah. 21 and a half big blinds. I mean, more importantly than that is that it's like 65, 70% of your stack, right? It's hard to let. Yeah. It's a final table. It's a, if a chip EV point of view, it's a it's a plus EV call. But final table with these pay jumps, king queen, like it's marginal. You know, like your opponent has oh. to be reshoving like king jacks, suiteds and stuff. And those hands might even just flat call this deck death. So if that's the case, and calling becomes way worse. So I like it. Oh, wow. But this is the battle, queens and tens. This is not fair. They've been battling so safely. Mm -hmm. Satu Bayev has stands. He has been jamming on Francisco quite a bit. He just jammed the last end. He probably thinks he wants to get called here even by Francisco. Thinking that that's yeah. going to be a good scenario for him. We know that he is in wow. all sorts of trouble. These queens are going to snap call in 0.1 second. Queens versus stands for 25 million chips. So far so good for the queens. <laughs> Tables yeah. are turned. He needs a queen. Now needs a queen. The man with the tens needs a queen. It is paint. Oh my goodness. That's so scary, by the way, that it is paint with a king and jack on the flop already. But that is going to be the end of Satu Bayev. Played one hell of a tournament. A satellite winner turned $1,000 into over $400,000. We're down to three. And Eric Seidel has pocket tens. He played great. Honestly, like I, yeah. I like the way he played. He made his moves, made his stance, fourth place. I think it's well deserved. Uh nice. I loved it. But now it's the three big hitters though. The final three in Seidel. Two tens gets three bet by Mulocker. Telling you we're gonna see Eric Seidel. He's gonna do something magical here today and get that knife bracelet, Roddy. He's just gonna all in here and Thomas has to fold. I mean, what are you gonna do? Call off with King Eight? No. Mm. Out. Thomas, maybe a little too inspired by all those solvers, because this one felt maybe a bit unnecessary. So we got 589k locked up, 759 for second, the 970s. These are big pay jumps, 180k. I know Seidel is rich, but these pay jumps are important to him too, you know? <laughs> uh, for the people who joined us later, Thomas Mulocker is in for three bullets. Francisco is in for nine bullets. And Eric Seidel, the absolute goat, one bullet, baby. No revise needed. I'm not, That's actually kind of sick. I'm not surprised, right? Like, he plays a style like he's not, he's never in for nine bullets. Like, never in his life <laughs> will he ever be in, even for five bullets, be too much. Thomas, he's four, thinking about three betting. He's three betting all of it. He's going for the win. He wants that bracelet bad. You can feel it. Yep. I mean, it's already one hell of a cat. Oh, no. Oh, my no. God. Thomas Mulocker at ropes, 30 <sighs> big blinds, auto all in. Roddy, you feel the pain? That is pure pain. That is pure pain here for Thomas Mulocker, unless he can get lucky one more time. He did get it in bad a few times tonight, and he got lucky. The tens, they've been beating a lot of hands that they shouldn't have been beating. Let's not forget about that. Francisco, he started his oh, off swing Francisco with the tens. Oh, Francisco saved wow. him. He just that flat called. I thought that there's a chance that would happen just because he might think Milocker just going to just throw away his hand a lot. But my gosh, we have kept Milocker alive. Francisco is going to be salty when he finds us out later. Two tens. Might still call here, but still, it's just a... He somehow got saved. And pray for a 10, but if he gets a 9, he might continue to. He gets a heart, Ooh. so he picks up. That is actually a, a really sick card, right? Because now Francisco might be worried that Thomas Mulocker has a king. 
Okay, uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like he's not too worried like, about. He's a surprisingly good card on the river card. That's a hard yeah. one to hit. <laughs> Does Thomas Mulocker like his hand now again, though? He thinks he's going to win a lot. I don't think he's looking to put chips in, though, like whether to call or bet himself. Well, he, I guess he's kind of blockering betting. Can Francisco raise? Yeah, of course. Is here. Of, of he course. Debated? then. What is he worried about? You think he's worried about quads? He ain't worried the about quads, King? mate. No. So all you got to ask yourself is, would my opponent call... A raise with the queen. If the answer is yeah. yes, of course you got a raise. Some people don't. Depend on the size, of course. Yeah. Like you put in all the chips. I don't know. Like is Thomas really calling off of a queen? Hard to say. If Francisco just calls here, I'll be in shock. I do not believe that. But we've seen some crazy stuff. He's going to go for a little raise here. He's targeting but a queen. Yeah, exactly. Because he didn't want to. He he didn't want to rake it all the chips because he thinks the queen would fold for that sizing. Mm -hmm. He tends. Now Thomas Mulocker is like, what the hell is happening in this hand? He saved, man. Like, uh, look, whatever he loses here, he's been saved. Is there a world where he all ins now and Francisco folds aces? <laughs> there is a. There is a world. If Adamo was playing, that would happen. <laughs> but this, no, nah, it's a good fold. Wow, solid fold. Thomas probably thinking that's a that's the ugliest flop I've ever seen for my tens. But that flop really, really saved him, and even the pre-flop action really saved him. Thomas Mulocker could have been out. Instead, he's still alive with twenty-one big blinds. Francisco does How take a lives? monstrous lead over the other two players, though. Whoa. This is a real battle here. It's top pair versus the king high flush draw with very important stacks. They, Thomas City on 20 big blinds. He mm -hmm. needs his pot. Eric needs his pot too. Someone needs his pot. It's not Francisco. <laughs> wow. That is a hell of a turn card. Eric Seidel still has top pair, but he needs to avoid, avoid the world. He needs to dodge <laughs> everything. <laughs> Every 10. Every queen, every seven, every king, every spade. Yeah, even seven's a pretty bad card because Seidel would make a little straight too. Thomas thinking, can he get some hands to fold here by betting turn, or should he take the free card? I don't know. It's tricky. It's really I can see it going both ways. Yeah. I kind of lean towards betting a little bit more because you can get a, you still get hands to fold like ace eight, king eight, these types of hands. Mm -hmm. Um, even the Jack Five is in a tough spot. This is a, this is not pretty when someone multi barrels into you on this board texture. I'm with you. I think I like the bet too, because there is a wow. chance that you take it down without seeing the river, and he does take it down because the river could have also been a deuce of diamonds or a deuce of hearts, and then suddenly you sit there with King Ten uh, to put it in Daniel's words with your sausage in your hand, and you're not very happy with the runner. <laughs> But man, I didn't. I don't think Thomas think Eric would have folded the jack there. He thought he got his opponent to fold one of those middling type pairs, right? But my jack is a really mm. big fold there. If Th if Thomas just limps here and Francisco raises, Thomas will probably jam. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I actually think he will limp, looking for the limp jam because he expects Francisco to raise gar really garbage hands, not the king three suited, but like you know the nine four off suit, these types of hands. But still action mm -hmm. flop. Yep. Mid pair versus the not flush draw. And obviously two over cards to the board. That is a sweet and turn card. One of the many cards that was going to be good for Thomas Mulocker. Yep. I think Mulocker can still go for value. I mean, obviously he knows he got the best hand. Just try to target the eight. Even some threes might call you here. I like the sizing. Not too big, not too small. You can rep a lot of draws. Wow. Hold again. Gets Francisco to pay off. That's lovely. One more value bet coming in. Thomas just thinking, what price can he get? At this point, he's probably going to size in a way where he thinks an eight would call. Um, yeah. 
a three would would have trouble with the five rolling off. If he puts his opponent on an eight, he's probably betting two point eight or something, right? Two seven, two yeah. eight. I agree. You can't bet too small where it's obvious. You want to bet big enough where it kind of looks like you might be bluffing. Um, very important pot. Three point two. This makes a lot of sense, but quick fold. Snap fold. Eric Seidel sitting there thinking, God, these guys are slow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Eric Seidel wins because they're both on zero time bank. And Eric Seidel sitting on 10 minutes. And he just like, they all make bad decisions now. Wow. These flops, man. Action they're just flop. hitting both players every single time. Mm -hmm. Bottom two pair for Thomas Mulocker. Mid pair and a gut shot for Francisco Benitez. But Roddy, you've Don't got, you've got two guys. Man. Two final yeah. table bettings versus one. Obviously, Francisco's got more, but this is it's a tough battle. You, you've got it in. All right, let's see. Queen Jack. Decent <laughs> hand. By the way, I told you that yeah. I was playing some five-card Omar, right, with Anatoly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and now he wants to organize a show match, a battle. Five card PLO, because in his words, we are both bad and it's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so he wants to play me heads up in a show match. <laughs> oh, well, do so it, sweet. Roddy. That would be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Make it happen. You, you let me know if that does happen. I'll try to make my way into that little chat and watch. That would be funny. He actually streams a lot, too. He does a lot of commentary for these final tables, too, I think, in Russian. But yeah, Anatoly ah. is very involved. He's got an active Twitch channel. Super nice guy. Not good in StarCraft, but super nice guy. <laughs> Shit StarCraft player, but great guy. So it kind of looks like the Thomas versus Francisco battle as Eric Seidel watches and, you know, watch, waiting for some blood. 10-4. That's what I was saying. This is why you limped the ace-10 suit earlier, because they raised the garbage mm -hmm. hands like that. Nice move here by Francisco, realizing that there aren't too many flops he's going to fall in love with with 10-4. So he may as well try to take it down pre-flop, and that's what he did. No idea how Thomas Mulocker is back to 17 million again. I'm pretty sure we started his uh, rest in peace speech with the pocket 10s against pocket aces, but he's back, Nenonoka. Yeah, he had 15 million to hand too, I think. Jeez, he'd be, he'd be over. I was gonna. I was about to say, man. I tell you, Eric Seidel, guaranteed top two. <laughs> like I was just calling it, but no. Milocker has multiple lives. He saved it all for this one tournament, man. Ace deuce. Dead. Queen three is good. Bluff. <laughs> you look at your hand there. If you're Eric Seidel, you're like, it's gonna be pretty hard to win, but maybe. <laughs> He has no pair, he has no diamond. Actually, pretty <laughs> meaningful, man, because, like, yeah. Like, if Eric Seidel drops to 8 million, then he gets a double, he's back to 16. But now he's at 12. If he doubles up now, he's at 24 million. If he would double through Francisco, he's actually the chip leader. <laughs> wow, Thomas Mulocker trying to bully his away with Queen 3 offsuit. I think Jack 6 suit is it's not great. But it feels like strong enough, considering that it's not even a 3x raise. Wow, he's just going to let go, though. Wow, that's a muscle play right there. Um, man, I was going to say something, but I forgot now. Stack size, Eric Seidel. 11 million. Yeah. Thomas Mulocker back to 17 million. Something like that. Move on. Totally okay. forgot. It's all good. This is just fun. It's fun. It really is. Right. Uh, it's exciting. Eric Seidel open Jack 10 here. It is not a great board for Jack 10, but it's not really a great board for many hands. I don't hate the bet. Yeah, I think it's okay, actually. I mean that's all you need. 
Oh yeah, you were saying how it that was a key important pot because if Eric Seidel falls to eight million or seven million, it actually changes the way the other two guys play, or not the the second guy plays, where he isn't as reckless. He's just guaranteeing that maybe the other guy will get it in first. So stack size is obviously important. Yes, they all want the bracelet, but we are also playing playing for a hundred and eighty k pay jump right now from third to second. So oh. you know, oh this I'm trying to think. Sometimes Thomas just rips it in, but it's a lot of big blinds. It's 28 yeah. big blinds, but it's definitely a plus EV ship. But is it worth the risk? That's the question. And he's running out of time. Well, we he is oh going to do he it. Does it. He does wow. it. He gets called immediately and he receives the bad news. He needs a 10. He needs a 10 and a 10 only at this point. Thomas Mulocker with a massive rip reflop. Needs to find a 10 on the river. Does Ow. not find the 10. Ace Queen will hold. Oh, that means Eric Seidel is guaranteed top two. And Thomas Mulocker goes out in third place. Wow. No, no, you said it. Sometimes he does it. This was one of these moments. Got snap called by the Ace Queen. And we are down to heads up. Wow. Uh, Thomas played great this final table. He got lucky in a lot of spots, but I think he really clawed his way. Again, one of those final tables wasn't that easy, but a phenomenal score for him, right? Because the guy kept getting 5th, 7th, 8th, and ninth, third place, 580k, I believe it is. It's a good score, but we're heads up. Obviously, a massive chip lead. But Eric Seidel can still get his ninth bracelet. If he just gets one double up, he can grind his way. He only has to beat one guy. He survived so many people already. Mm -hmm. And he's on his first bullet. He is a royal rotor at this point. Meanwhile, Francisco is in for nine. Eric Seidel does flop best here. Flops bottom pair. This could be a very quick heads up because Eric Seidel has been playing incredibly quick throughout the entire night. Makes trip fives here on the river. Hopes that Francisco mm -hmm. bets. Francisco does not bet. Yeah, I mean, wow. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's Seidel is heads up for a bracelet on our show. The one time he plays this event. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Feels like it's going to be a long shot. 12 million against 50. But we have seen bigger swings, believe it or not, guys. If you don't watch us every mm -hmm. single Tuesday. We've seen people make miraculous comebacks time and time again. That you think it's literally impossible. But it never is. Five to one will be by no means the worst comeback we've seen. We've seen eight to one. We've seen twelve to one. <laughs> we've seen crazy stuff, and he, we've seen trip jacks for Eric. He's he's beginning the upswing. Here we go. I mean, I don't know if he's going to win anymore, but it's a good sign. The poker gods are still around. A little min bet. Francisco does not want to give you. I think Francisco is just looking to close this out. Oh, oh wow, this could be a God. double. Eric Seidel. This could be a double. Queens and Jacks. We've seen this so many times today, the Queens and Jacks. It's unreal. And Jax has gotten destroyed every single time. Once again, yeah, it's coming. Jacks all in. The Jacks will all in. The Queens will snap call. And we are off to very unfair races. Can the Queens of Eric Seidel hold and keep his dreams alive of winning his ninth WSOP bracelet? 27 million chips in the middle. Oh, Queens yes. flop has set. Nananoko, we've got a battle on our hands. 35 million against 27 million. This is sick. Eric Seidel is on pace to potentially win his ninth bracelet in $977,000. Francisco, he thought he locked it up. He's got a real battle now. I can't no, believe bottom pair here, but yeah, now this is a pretty fair fight because now one little pot goes Eric Seidel's way and he has taken the lead. He's got a million river cards to potentially make the best hand. Does not have the best hand yet, but any club, any king, any queen. We got a call here. Can yeah. Seidel continue? But, you know, and this is a good card to bluff. Eric Seidel has been checking a lot, hasn't stabbing, but maybe yeah. it's different heads up. And he's ah! going for it. He's going to take it down. Seidel is back. 
Well, that sucks. It's, it's good as well to see him change it up a little bit. Because there were a couple spots throughout the night. Oh my god, Ace-10 and Ace-King. Oh my god. Sidel with the Ace-King suited. Sometimes people are reckless and just 4 bed jam Ace-10. I don't think he will. No. Because it's still quite well, deep. For... Oh, okay. but this is bad. Calm. Neither no, player flops Psych a whole no. lot. Imagine if Francisco would have made it big there pre flop. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so it goes check, check on the flop. I still think a bet could get in somewhere. Um, at least right here. I don't think the ace 10 is, is going away. I mean, we can't forget what happened pre flop, right? The way that pre flop took place, you don't have a whole lot of seven fours and threes in your range if you're Francisco. Oh, nice fold. Uh, Ace King will take it down, and we've got a new chip leader, unless I can't count, but unlike Nanonoko, I can count a little bit. Eric Seidel has taken the lead in this heads up battle. It's obviously very even, but that's quite remarkable. But not too long ago, it was 50 million against 10 million. Yeah, it's great. Eric Saito's the chip leader on pace to win his knife bracelet. Man, this is insane. 50 big blinds apiece, though. We got a lot of blinds. Yep. But Francisco plays pretty well. So I don't think it means anything. There's no guarantee this will go on for a long time. Wow. What a night this has been. It's actually such a crazy night. Very memorable, that's for sure. Yeah, every hour so far has been jam packed of action. It's not, it's not one of those days where like, oh, one hour is like quite boring, right? And one hour is really good. This has been Look on at this. point throughout the whole thing. Yeah, three hits. It's actually, pretty. Well, it's a pretty big turn card to hit with eight million chips in the middle. The river is safe. Seidel does have bottom pair. It's obviously hard to call off a big bet here. Let's see what Francisco does. He's thinking about it. I think he. He fires. He bets four million on a bluff, but three is hard. To... It's bottom oh, pair. And it calls. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! What is happening, Nanonoko? He just snapped. Eric well, not snap called, but four million yeah, chips on the river with bottom pair on that board. That is insane. Wow. He barely even thought. Seidel, two to one chip lead. He was down five to one. I'm going to say it again. He is on pace to win his ninth bracelet, Roddy. And let's not forget, one bullet and 10 minutes of time bank left as well. There is winning and there is winning in style. And Eric Seidel at this point is absolutely crushing it. Just calls again there, by the way, with a pair of uh, jacks. Those check, check on the river. And Francisco is like, what the hell are you doing to me, Eric Seidel? As Eric Seidel is now up to over 41 million chips. This is mental. Actually crazy. We have 220k they're playing for on the line and the bracelet. Francisco oh. cannot believe it right now. He does flop the trip tens. This is actually a bad card for Seidel, right? Because an ace almost feels like the nuts here. But Yeah, this is a payoff turn for sure. Maybe river. Depends on sizings. Francisco should be trying to get some value unless he's trying to pick up a delayed C bet. A lot of guys will C bet the 10 10 6, so I'd love to see him throw a bet out there. Try to get paid off by the ace high multiple streets. Especially when you're down a lot of chips, you find you try to find ways to win a lot of chips, right? And that's by betting. Eric Seidel folds here, he's a maniac. <laughs> But he does not fall, does make the call, and that's obviously very logical with an ace on this double paired board. Let's see. I think Francisco is going to overbet pot on the river. What do you think? Oh, he doesn't. Well, it's a sizable bet. I think it's designed well, obviously, a six to call and an ace to call sometimes. If he does the big bet, it's kind of only a six. So it's kind of best of both worlds. And you know, some, obviously, some nine X's hit yeah. randomly, nine eight suited. Sidel, though. I think he can sniff this one out and just just give it up, right? Like it looks strong. His timing's been wow. perfect. Nice fold. Playing really well. I like the way that Francisco played at hand too, though. I think he did his best there to make the most of it. Uh, we are getting close to another break, guys, and I feel at this point that I need it, man. I I was not ready for this roller coaster of emotions of Eric Seidel just running ten million chips 
up to 40 million. Francisco could probably use a little break too. This one goes check, check on the flop. Ace eight is still good. Eric Seidel bets. Yeah. Don't think Francisco falls to this bet though. Correct. Seidel chipping away. Francisco needs a break badly. It's like, you know, the guy's getting beat up in the boxing ring. Like, coach, call, throw in the towel, yeah. call a timeout, something. Wait, what? You wrecked oh, right was now. a seven. I, I didn't even see there yeah, was a seven a on that board. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, I realized that when it, <laughs> I realized that when the chips went his way and then go. I'm like, what? Seidel has out kicked his opponent Fifth. with the 6-4 flop. <laughs> Just the kicker is playing right now, right? Is it? Yeah, but they will only ever play? play with a three. Oh, I was going to say that one, but no, actually makes two pair for our opponent here. And I don't know if Seidel is going to fold his hand, right? Like you check down this hand, you're looking to pay off the minimum. And yeah, not for this sizing. Yeah. I don't think Seidel can fold, can he? Nope. So Francisco will finally get one back on the board. Two pair is good here. 24 million against 38 million. King six versus a three. I wouldn't hate it if Eric Seidel. I actually like it that Seidel just folds absolute garbage every now and then, especially if it gets raised into him. I feel like in the past, we've seen some people be really stubborn in heads up, where it's like, got a fight over absolute every pot, but then they end up losing 3 million chips with nine dues offsuit. And I'm like, was that really necessary? Sometimes I guess it is, but. He's solid. I'll tell you that. Like, we've obviously seen his final table. Nothing too crazy makes him plays occasionally but super solid and you know that's the guy's been around a long you heard daniel say he's been playing longer than daniel still hanging in there you got ace five versus a six here could potentially be a chop pot but obviously one of them could take it down by either making a pair or just winning it on pure regression this is already kind of an annoying bet to face for with ace five so that does make the call yeah, that's a that's a big call there. Likely chopping the pot up, but I don't think Francisco thinks he's ever good here. Thinking about turning <laughs> his hand to pot. It should work. Well done. Very well done there by Francisco. He's not giving up. We know he had a slightly better hand, and we are making it to the third break. My goodness, those last 12 minutes were damn crazy. $977,000 on top tonight. And of course, the WSOP bracelet. Nanonoko and I will be taking a four minute and 40 second break. If you guys are enjoying the show, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's plenty of really cool poker stuff happening on this channel. And we'll see you guys in a couple minutes. On Sunday, it is the 1K GG Masters, the $2 million guarantee, and it's a freeze out again, yes? Oh, it's great, Jeff. You can only go broke one time. Hey, and you can play a satellite to get in the mix. Play a satellite, which I know you need, that 1K buy-in, not within the Brent Hanks bankroll. This is a two-day event. Again, it is a freeze out, and it does resume on Monday after level 32 or when we have reached the final table. Hello everybody, Daniel Granu here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations, you know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's going to fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing. But, eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flopped the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But, in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see, in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. 
Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry, you don't even have to lift a finger. First, simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop up window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my! God. Michael Otamo is the best. Welcome back to our number four, where we will continue the heads-up battle between Eric Seidel and Francisco Benitez. Then I know how those last 12 minutes before the break. That was wild. Yeah, it's been wild. Isn't it like perfect that they're sitting across from each other and there's like a bracelet up in the top mm -hmm. middle? It's just stars aligned. Here we go. And the player flops a whole lot, but it's obviously a lot better for Eric Seidel than it is for the deuce three. Hard to continue here with three deuce of hearts. Seidel wins another one. Chips up to 36 million. Chiggy three bet with A3. Makes the call. It's not a Seidel okay. move, all right. Well, the call with A3 is? Yeah, suited. Something. Offsuit would have been then ditched, of course. Francisco really taking a lot of time with his 10 6 offsuit. No, now's not the time to be using his time bank. Here we go. Quarter pot. Seidel will let it go. The winner walks away with $977,000. And the bracelet would be number nine for Mr. Seidel. Earlier, our production crew said we're obviously kind of rooting for Eric Seidel. Would be awesome to see him win bracelet nine. I'm like, yeah, guys, that's going to be a long shot. Well, here we are. Heads up. That dream is alive. With the chip lead, okay? You got to remember, we started 5 to 1 earlier, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm in happy, like 3 and 4, I'm happy he's sitting well. on like 20 blinds. Yep. Fly in my room. And now you're catching flies. Yeah. I get so triggered, mate. So annoying. Because I already know that that thing is going to keep me up at night. It's going to somehow magically find its way into my bedroom. And he tried to sleep and it was like bzz, bzz. Seidel with a big bet here on the turn. Not much that Francisco can do about it, so he lets it go. Nice. Your birthday is showing up still. My God, this is just a perfect episode for you. Two sets of pocket fours. Birthday is all around. Dan underground, you Seidel, and heads up. 
just a dream stream for you, eh? It's been a very, it's been a very good night. I definitely love the part where we had pocket fours make a set, then two hands later, pocket fours make a set again. Clicking a very comfortable three zero lead that does feel good. Yeah, that, I, I don't know. I might have to just forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'll let you buy out for two hundred and forty dollars, Nanoko, if you want. Yeah, it's free money for you. You know it. You just lock it up. Francisco does win this one, as he made a pair of fives. Sado has Ace Five offsuit here. Could get a so little flop. Just to break, what Francisco needed to maybe turn things around. The five minutes always helps, right? When you're getting like. I don't want to say demolish, but things not going your way. I think it will all come down to the first big pot they play. This goes check, check. Francisco with check eight checks again. Sadel probably feels that he's got the best hand at this point. That is a lovely river card. If he didn't think he had the best hand yet, he definitely has the best hand now. Francisco is not taking a stab at it, though. Yeah. Sidell just, he's always trying to trap his opponents, man. This guy's so sneaky. I don't think he was intending to let that hand go on any street. I, this Six is. Six offsuit. Rowdy, just, I yeah, read something in Chaz. It's pretty funny. Francisco, nine bullets. Sidell, nine bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but look at this hand, though. It's Ace King, Ace Eight suited. Well, okay, the the limp from Seidel might save him. This pot could be could have been way bigger had he just raised. But I guess technically it's not over yet. Oh, oh my, my god. god! All in. No, Eric Seidel <sighs> oh. needs an eight. Ace Eight of Hearts. Okay, Four does get heart. two hearts. Needs an eight or a heart to close it out. He still needs an eight or a heart. Seidel, an eight or a heart? Gets oh the heart, God, gets the bracelet, Seidel wins the wins. high roller, super millions. Oh my goodness. Nananoko, he's done it. The GOAT, the cyborg, Eric Seidel, bracelet number nine, gets lucky, but I cannot believe that Eric Seidel has actually won this tournament. Five to one chip lead, turned it around. Misstep, but got there. It's amazing, amazing stuff, Roddy. Talk to me. How about, that was like 40 big blinds, wasn't it? Yeah, because uh, this big blind was 700,000. He is sitting on 27, 28 million. That was 40 <laughs> big blinds. It was a. Because wow. Francisco just made it 3.5 big blinds, but Seidel was like, I know you're full of it. Made the play. He did end up getting there. I cannot believe it. And that was a 220k pay jump from second to first. Seidel has made history. He's got his ninth bracelet on the GG stream. What a sick day, Rod. He really is. Wins the bracelet. Wins also a high roll of super millions. Gets a cool little border over at GG. I think one of the very first times he's probably ever played it, right? Let's not forget that we do this every single week. We keep track of all of these guys. And suddenly we see Eric Seidel in the mix because there is a bracelet on the line. Gets there of one bullet as well. Royal Roading. Start the heads up down 5-1 to one in chips. Turns it around in rapid fashion. Obviously Queens against Jacks really, really did help him to turn the tide. That was a bit of a setup. Uh, absolutely amazing for Eric Seidel. Even if he got a bit lucky there towards the end. I mean, that's poker. They all got a bit lucky. Let's not forget that Francisco got it all in very early on with 10s against Jax. So he could have been out too in 7th or 8th place. Everyone has their moments. What a wild night this has been, Nanonoko. I mean, kudos to Francisco as well, though, right? He did play very well, especially when it was like 5 or 600. I really like the way he played. Put a lot of pressure on the rest of the table. But Seidel, just chilling. Uh, most amount of time left on the shot clock as well because apparently he doesn't need as much time as everybody else. Uh, insane. <laughs> the og man he really is right like this guy he's been he's played longer than dan and ground you dan and you looked up to him way back when under playing some tournament um it was cool to have dan on the stream but just eric Seidel, he 
But even before today, right? Like he was hanging in with those 25k, 50k, 100k, playing with the best players, still making mini final tables, getting wins out there. You saw his profile. He had three 2.2 million dollar scores. Okay, that doesn't include the other eight other bracelets he won. Those weren't even bracelet events. Like this guy is amazing. He's stood the test of time. I just. You know, and he does his thing. Because Eric Seidel, he's not he's not one of those guys that does all these interviews and stuff like this and like a big personality out there, right? He shows up, collects the check, and goes home. And goes about his day, hangs out with his family. That's that, He's a family man. That's what he does. He's Eric Seidel. He's the greatest. Seriously, one of the best shows we've had, Roddy, honestly. I, I'm just, I'm so excited. And it's like 8 a.m. here for me. <laughs> well, I'm happy you're so excited. I definitely felt it too, like you said, especially when we were like four-handed. It just felt tense. It felt like, all right, something magical is going to happen, isn't it? Well, it's safe to say that the magic took place. We can talk about some of the other players that we saw. We obviously had Isaac Barron as well at this final table. Nanonoko, your pick of the week. Didn't go very well for Isaac Barron today. Just a bit unlucky, I guess, the setups. He got set up hard and really early. A bunch of pocket jacks and Tabaka jacks. I do think the I want to hand out a little shout out to the fourth place guy, the guy from Montenegro. Uh, I forget Shin something like that. But uh, he he played pretty yep. good. He satellited it in, won like 450k or so. Made his moves against Francisco. Did really well. But really, I think the other two guys to talk about is Thomas Mulocker. First of all, he got third place. A great score. Uh, he kept it getting ninth, eighth, seven. He's got five final tables in eight episodes of season two. Doesn't include the few final tables he made at the end of season one. Amazing player. I think we both think he he always goes to the win. Loved it. He always has tough spots today. Many, many tough spots here today as well. But Francisco, like the chip leader, served day. He played great. Yes, he got lucky in that one hand, but he did cooler get cooler in some hands too. But he tried to run over the table, and I think he did a pretty good job of doing that. Um, everyone was making some big folds, played really well. He, just, he got, Saido got the best of him at the beginning of the heads up before we went to the break, right? Like, Saido made some sick calls. He called a bottom pair on four over cardboard straight and flushes yeah. out there, you know what I mean? And in the end, yes, Francisco did get unlucky there. He would have, he would have been five to one chip lead again had he won that pot, but it's poker. Like, the, that's poker basically, right? He still had 30% <laughs> chance to win the ace eight suited. Um, but he did it. My man, Seidel, I can't believe it. Daniel's going to be ecstatic to hear that too, I think. Absolutely. I mean, you gave a lot of shoutouts there. I do think we kind of have to mention Chin Wai Chin for a little bit as well, because he actually played very well. And if you talk about a man who can say, I got unlucky tonight, I think he could really say that he got unlucky, because he got it in good multiple times for Monster Pots. And not just like 55-45, but no, like 80% favorite. And he lost a couple big ones. It could have been a very different night for him if the poker gods were a bit more kind to him. But uh, hopefully we'll see more of him in the future because I do think that he has a performance that he could be proud of. But yeah, I guess the man of the hour is Eric Seidel winning his ninth bracelet. Honestly, a pretty amazing episode. I don't know if I have anything else to add. This was pretty memorable, Nanonoko. It's always fun when you have the special editions. You know, every high roller super million final table, there are some things that we find fun, some things that we will remember. We knew that tonight was going to be big because there's a bracelet on the line. Guaranteed price pool for this event was 5 million. It became over 6 million in the end. And then you have a name, a player like Eric Sadel winning it all. You can't make it up on his first bullet too. I mean, people were in for 12 bullets. You said it, but Eric Sadel yeah. gets the job done with one bullet. I think that honestly gives the bracelet even a little bit of extra shine. Whereas like, I didn't have to fire away. I didn't win this because I have a lot of money in the bank. I won this because I played great poker for, well, an entire Sunday and on the Tuesday night too. Just awesome stuff. I agree. I agree. And you know, like nowadays we've got a lot of different type of bracelets out there. Like, you know, like the $400 ones, the five one ks and stuff like this. But it, to a high stakes poker player professional, it actually does mean something special when you win one of the high roller ones because when you beat a 10k field, you're playing star studded players, right? This final table, everyone was very good. There was no slouch out there, um, no guy just limping and doing dumb stuff and going crazy. Uh, so it's got to mean a lot to win a 10k one, whereas, you know, winning a 1k one is nice too, but, you know, the, the field's much softer. So I think it is something special. I think Seidel played amazing. I said it many, many times. Like, he was solid, but 
I said it when there was like six or seven or eight hand. I said, I think we're going to get Seidel at least to heads up. And he did. And he delivered. Well, we did. It was an uh, awesome night of poker. Hopefully you guys at home enjoyed it as much as we did. I haven't seen Nanonoko that hype in a long time. I think that means a lot. And I think that's going to do it for us. Unless there is one last thing you want to get off your chest, Nano. Pocket Fives will make a set next year. See you guys. <laughs> in season three pocket fives may make a set for now i'm winning that battle but congrats of course to eric sadel for winning bracelet number nine a phenomenal night of poker make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet we are here each and every single tuesday it is around 7 p.m in central europe so 1 p.m if you live in the east coast in america or 10 a.m on the west coast or wednesday morning if you live somewhere where nanonoko lives in Asia or Australia. Thank you guys for tuning in and hopefully we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Elke was waiting to come back to the final table Fedor holds things, oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.